Want to participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Fourth of July celebrations are underway all over the country this weekend, but the most attention is being reserved for the one here in Washington tomorrow. Betting is going on all over town as to whether he will draw as many people as the Beach Boys. A torrential rainstorm threatened to cancel the concert. I'm praying that it continues to rain because I thought that's the only thing that can save me. And I said, just keep the faith. And I went out on stage and I said to the crowd, the show will go on. And if you're willing to stay, I'm more than ready and willing and able to do the show. All the place went up for grabs and a bolt of lightning went through the place. And I went back to the trailer and we, we waited. It couldn't have been five minutes. Five minutes. And the PR lady came running in and she said, there is a rainbow over the Washington Monument. Ladies and gentlemen, I ended the show with America and asked the crowd to sing. And they heard that crowd singing eight city blocks away. Isn't that great, Wayne? Wow. Keep in mind, at the beginning of that piece... Well, I won't talk like that. You talk like that. But right. at the beginning of the piece, right. if you remember, this was back when James Watt said the Beach Boys suck. Right. And they couldn't perform on the 4th of July. Yeah, because the Beach Boys were too edgy. They replaced the Beach Boys with Wayne Newton. At the beginning of that tape, Wayne Newton is saying he's praying for rain. Right. The reason he's praying for rain is because he's positive he's not the Beach Boys. Nobody's going to be out there to see him. Exactly. Right. But then somehow... Everything works out. Finances have often bedeviled oh. Newton. In 1991, while he was earning a quarter million a week, he was sued by... Well, let me just say hi. Welcome to the Don Mike Show. Hello. Welcome to the pre-show. Creditors for $22 million in unpaid bills to reorganize his... And can I just say this? Oh. As I look at the funeral today... Yes. And I see Kirk Douglas, right? And of course, Merv everywhere. Fabulous Merv. Fabulous or, Merv is everywhere. Other showbiz luminaries. Mm -hmm. I ask myself, where is Wayne Newton at the John? Excuse me, not the John Wayne, but the Ronald Reagan funeral. Where is Newton? Yeah. Where is he? His growing debt in 1992, Newton filed for bankruptcy. That's the hardest decision I've ever made in my life, because I have I, I'm I'm a man with a great deal of pride, maybe more than I should have. Uh huh. And uh, to file for reorganization was very very painful because I knew what the world would make of it. Newton parted with his managers and took control. He asked his friend Donald, Donald Trump, Trump, no stranger to bill collectors himself. Here's the advice: He said, "Do yourself a favor." He said, "Get the attorneys out of it." He should pick up the phone and call your major creditors. He should say, hi, this is Wayne Newton. I want to come and talk to you. That's Newton was able to settle with many of his creditors and managed to maintain his lifestyle. <laughs> now he writes his own checks. Let, and let that be advice for any of you listeners out there. That uh -huh. Right. MasterCard or, right. or a Visa calling or Bank One trouble. or whatever. Just, right. You know, just say, uh, hi, this is Wayne Newton. Just, um... Write your own checks. And they will they will allow you to work out whatever financial uh, plan you have to work out while you are able to maintain your lifestyle. That's great. Wayne, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Because you've proven that you can get by in this day and age on a quarter million a week. Thank you, Ron. And uh, the beating you guys take. <laughs> and where, where was he at the funeral today? And you know there were other showbiz people besides... Just Kirk Douglas, and I was praying that he was going to get up and speak, but he did. Do we have a Kirk Douglas? I'll, uh, I'll explain later. Um, I'll explain it all. You done? I'm trying to think. There were there were Hollywood power couples there. Uh -huh. There were ho Hollywood. The way I, I heard there. the funeral described as a uh, touch of D.C. and a touch of Hollywood. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and uh, right. Buzz, if you if you would see, you know, I watched the whole g goddamn thing today and was not able to. I was unable to uh, watch it anything. today. I, I was, see if I can find a who's who. Yeah. I was busy attending the Stepford Wives. Oh, lucky you. Well, you looking for the next? <laughs> yeah, doing some scouting? Just a little scouting. You know what? Uh, 
dream scenario in a lot of that movie. <laughs> I enjoyed the movie. I thought Spartacus was better, but then I'm prejudiced. I was hoping they'd get him to stand up and say a few I, words. I guess they didn't have time. I guess, I guess not. Time. time. <laughs> Out of time? Out of time. Kirk Douglas. Green is good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. Um, <laughs> hello. Hello there, Mr. Shannon. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Before we even do this, we have an affiliate of the day call. Ready? Somebody screwed something up already? Wow. Hello, Dennis from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh. Wow. Green Bay, our station, WNFL. <laughs> All right, we're taking this call before we've even officially started the show. Why is this station the station of the day? It is the station of the day because they are broadcasting the Don and Mike show and simultaneously broadcasting a rebroadcast of yesterday's Glenn Beck show. Wow. What is Glenn Beck? Glenn Beck. Who is, who, is that a, a talk DJ? Yeah, he's, he, uh, he looks like Craig Kilborn, but he talks like Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> hey, that, that's, that's a one-two punch. A that's a package man. that'll take you far. That's a show business Absolutely. double threat. All right, well, thank you, Dennis. Thank you for the update. This seems to be happening every once in a while. Who am I kidding? Daily on one of our affiliates where they just forget to throw the switch and there were two shows at once. Yesterday, our affiliate of the day was Spokane, Washington, right? And yesterday, it's Green Bay. Here's Tracy from Oklahoma. Tracy. Hey, Don. Hey, hey, Mike. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Hey. Howdy. How's everybody doing? We're doing great. What can we do for you, sir? Oh, I told you I'd call when I got out, so I'm just making my appearance, making my call. Oh, he's out. You're out of jail? Out of prison. I'm the one that the drawings of uh, the person we can't name, or can we name him now? Who are you talking about? Uh, that radio DJ that I did the drawings of, dressed in the skirts, always getting uh, beat down. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the... H.S. is his initials. Oh, Howard. What, what about yeah. Howard? Oh, I was the one that always took them drawings. You I always wrote, I wrote in doing the Charlie Stossel and everything. You, and you here. sent us drawings? Is that right? Yeah. I sent you a bunch Joe. Of Hi, Joe. Remember, this was the guy that I got his picture off the Internet, and he had the barbed wire tattoo around his neck. Oh, yeah. What uh, were you in the joint for, sir? Uh, burglaries. Burglary, you gonna fly? Uh, you gonna fly on the straight and narrow now? Oh, I already am. That's good for you. Good for you. Well, you know me. I'm a, I'm a very uh, shallow person. Why? Why did you mention Howard's name? Oh well, because at the time you guys was having your little thing, we couldn't say his name. And I sent you all the drawings of him getting beat up. Oh, okay. All right, now I can see. Right. I, now I understand. Back three or four years ago, when Howard had an edict that no one in the company could say his name, that's right. You would draw us pictures. I love to ask people in different walks of, of, of life of Howard Stern in prison with, uh, with us beat him. I like to have uh, uh, different questions for different people in different lines of work. This would be a line of work, and and it always goes something like this: What was your most negative experience while in prison? Getting too drunk and passing out in my own cell and having the guards find me like that. And Mike, conversely, uh, what was the best experience? Ah, uh, let's see. Take your time. Sure. What was the best? Th how, how long were you in the joint? Oh, about 12 years. What was the best? 12 years. So now, that they, did anything happen besides just the burglary? Oh, no. I just had a bunch of burglaries and stuff. Oh, a bunch oh, of burglaries. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what was great? What, what was one good thing in, in 12 years? Uh, eating steak once. Eating steak, steak one wow. time in 12 years. That should be, uh, tell everybody they might want to stay out of the joint. Yeah. Let me just tell you a, a bit of advice that I've recently learned. If and, and God willing, I've not been in your situation, but if I was uh, in prison for 12 years, I would tell you what Donald Trump once told a friend of mine. You go to the warden and you say, this is Wan Newton. It works miracles. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tracy. See ya. Hey, Tracy. All right. Yeah. How is it being in prison with a girl's name? Well, actually, that's why I went to pub, but it really didn't bother me too much. It didn't bother you, and uh, and you. I'm 204 and kind of stocky, and uh -huh. so you nobody nobody messed with you. You right? sound hot. you, you sound hot. You sound dreamy. Oh, I am. Well, thank you, Don. All right, <laughs> All right. Good, goodbye. Hold we on. Appreciate that's it. crazy. Compliment. He's uh, he's out, a free man now, and will. Uh, You've not even started the show. He will never sin again. He, he uh, was in prison for burglary, and he just stole my heart. Hello. <laughs> Yes, hello. hello. Yes, hello. Mr. Shannon. Hello, I'm Scott Shannon. Let me say, we care. Big, 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 rugged first weekend. <laughs> hey, Mr. Drysdale. Yes, that Mr. Shannon. Hello, I'm Scott Shannon. Where does David Hasselhoff often stop to eat in the morning? Where? Drunken donuts. <laughs> 
He got a DUI. Oh, he did. He did. Well, there we go, Mr. Shannon. Look at him. Look at that boy laughing. He loves it. What Swedish supergroup imprisoned Han Solo? Abba, 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 the, Abba one Kenobi? Abba the Hutt. Abba the Hutt, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see if you get this one. All right, Mr. Shannon. You smart banker. Hello. Scott Shannon here. What's O.J. Simpson's favorite family drama on the WB? I don't know, Mr. Shannon. Kill more girls. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> See, that one, I'm sorry. That's, oh, that's, I'll give that finally. one. Kill more girls. Hey, now. The Don and Mike Show. <laughs> you can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. We are. And... If the door was Hello. simply... Hi, Julia. Julia's here. And they're here. Well, everybody got in without a door today. That's all I know. There they all are. Kill them. Everybody got in. They walked through the door. Oh, hold on. Well, you just had your dream come true, Mike. Yes, they've left forever. Door just shut on them. <laughs> and now I can't get the other thing. Okay, let's get the Rob thing here. You know, maybe it's just... Maybe it's just time to have the pre-show be the beginning to the show. That might be a good yeah. idea. It's simply too confusing for these too machines. Too many buttons, too many tapes. No, I, really. got a, I, got a pro I got no problem with pushing the buttons and putting it in. It's work when you push the button. Based on a true story. Thank you. He was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Thank you very hard. Himself. Thank you. A man of faith. Right. A man of hate. Yes. And the soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. Must be And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. Wives. And all the ships at sea are wives. Why? Oh, wives. 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 They're together, you know. I know. Our wives are together right yeah. now. They are the men that do a radio show <laughs> for ye. Don Geronimo and Mike O'Mara. Yeah. yeah. Well, hello. 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 Hi, and thank you for listening, everybody. Don and Mike show. New episode on this Friday. 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 06. One one oh four. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. Hi, Buzz. Don and Mike show new episode this Friday. It's June eleven twenty odd four. Call us from anywhere in America eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. Wonderful. From Canada, please to be calling eight hundred six three six one zero six seven in Washington D.C. two zero two four three two one zero six seven. You know, I apologize about that. This, the problem with these machines... Yeah, it's not your problem. It's the old. machine's problem. But I want, I, I want to hear those tapes in that certain order every day. And I we, know. We, could, we all do. We could put all of these separate tapes onto a, a disc, uh -huh. and it would play effortless, effortlessly and flawlessly every day. Why won't Wendell, but, why won't Wendell listen to this? Oh, no. stop. When we have these concerns, why won't Wendell pay attention to these? But things? I like occasionally this. playing things out of order. Uh -huh. Now, Wendell, you know I'm just kidding you. To bring that level of sponsorship. Do not you. shoot me today, Wendell. I am joking. The this home listener. Up. Anyway, uh, the good news is that I had a meeting with uh, uh, our chief engineer, Anthony Diggs. Bacardi Limon. Remember him, mm -hmm. Anthony Diggs? Bacardi yeah. Limon. Tony. And he tells me that uh, a plan that was originally announced in 1997 will be happening in the next three weeks as we go from these cartridges, these things like this, right? right? To One of these. digital. Digital, uh, probably yeah, roughly 10 years behind every other radio station. Mm -hmm. And he thinks, even though the, the station made a firm commitment, to, and he wasn't working here back then, right? right. Station, the company made a, fir a firm commitment that we would go digital in 1997. Right. Here it is, 2004, and we're finally about ready to install it. You don't want to rush into anything. You want no, to you want to take your time and do it right. However, when I had the meeting with Tony yesterday, right? This is so difficult of the way WJFK, our home station, is run. Mm -hmm. We've got the software. Mm -hmm. The software that we've got that's going to make all of the sound effects and commercials and music and everything mm -hmm. digital doesn't really fit the stuff that we have here in the studio. Like the control board and things like yeah. that. Hmm. The good news is that there's a version 2.0 ah. of this software right. which will be available in November. <laughs> Now, I said, so we're going to put in version 1.0, uh -huh. which which may or may not work. Right. right. And, and Tony, who was very nice and very patient with my question, sure. said yes. And I said, why don't we just take the step ahead to get 
the version two. Yeah. The updated version. Sure. Good he question. said, well, it's, it's not out till November. And then he mentioned that, oh, yeah, the company doesn't want to pay in advance for it. Of course they don't. So uh, I guess... That would not be the infinity way. You know, in a, in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to stop yelling about the tape cartridges, and instead we'll be able to be, uh, be able to be yelling about... At, at what are basically computer glitches. Right. Something new. The, the new glitches. Great. But that's for another day. I apologize. We've got a big show today. You don't want to hear that, for goodness sake. It's, it's, it's To quote the hyperactive poodle on Channel 5, <laughs> Holly Morris... And why they ever sent this girl who... Listen, here's her job in life. She, she's on the morning news show, right? Her job in life is like if they're having a contest to find the biggest pumpkin in Virginia, <laughs> right? they send her there. That's, that's, her, that's her thing. She covers the festivals. If there's a dog that had a litter of 13 puppies... She's there. She's the one. If it's roller skating week, right? They got her out at a roller skating rink. Of course, mm -hmm. she's not a serious reporter. Nutty wedding. Yeah, she's, she's there. there. She's Absolutely. kooky. She's the kookiest. And what great energy and wit. She uh, she dresses up in the crazy outfits and she does she does the folk dancing and whatever it is they need her to do. They'll get to the bikeathon. Well, as it turns out, now oh, and, oh here she is recently in action. In action. You tell me what you think this woman's doing. And you can get news, weather, and uh, the latest news and weather. Not this one. News at noon. No, that's Lark. And we'll see She's tomorrow. sitting. Right, safely. All right, we're doing a big thing. <laughs> I can't get it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, yeah. Shake it, shake it, shake it, yeah. She's perfect. There she is. Anyway. To I'd send. You might want to keep her away from a funeral. <laughs> anyway, they got her down there today. And to show that she's a real reporter and not the crazy reporter. Right. She's dressed in a nice black suit and she's got pearls on. Good. And she can't help herself. That she's all excited about this. She just, I'm down here now at 17th and Constitution where there's plenty of room if you want to come down to get a good seat. She does an interview with a couple of uh, brain dead kids. Right. And then she says... And the skies look pretty good, so if you're planning on coming down for the festivities today... Festivities? A quote. Wow. The festivities oh today. God. Festivities. Fest. I know we talked a lot about it yesterday, mm -hmm. but it's just out of control. I'll be glad with... Is the guy, is the box on the plane yeah, yet? I think he's, yes, yes, he he's left gone. Us. Is he, he has left gone? the building. Is yes. he gone? He's, off. Can we, he's in the air. Can we go back to living uh, our normal crazy lives now here in D.C.? Pretty much, as soon as the traffic clears. You up. know, and I watched uh, the coverage last night where they were down there standing in line, and it was the... It was not like a funeral at all. It was really like more like the Fourth of July celebration, with people waving at the camera. And you know, they, they talk about is it solemnity? Is that the uh, the, the yes. atmosphere? Mm -hmm. It was not a solemn atmosphere no. at all. It reminded no. me the footage I saw last night of the NFL experience. Right. If you've ever gone to the Super Bowl, they've got this uh, like theme park where you wait in line and your kid gets to throw a football at, at, at a hole and you know pretend right. he's a quarterback and you wait in line for an hour and you wear crazy hats and, and it really. I heard a lady interviewed who was saying, "We uh, well, we were uh, we were reserved the other night, but uh, we're going to bring our cameras down and get some great pictures." And this was a lady from out of town, and it suddenly occurred to me mm -hmm. that what this is, and I, I didn't process this until I heard the woman speak. This is a, this is like the number one tourist attraction. That's what this is. This is the early tourist season. Actually, it's it's mid tourist. But there's got to be an awful lot of locals down there. There's some locals down there, but I mean that the whole atmosphere was really not. Funereal. It no. was more like a uh, a tourist attraction, and it it just seemed weird to me. Well, I think I, I think most of the people are people who live in this area. I can't imagine. You think so? That fifty or sixty thousand people just drove here to put on their giant Doctor Seuss uh, Doctor Seuss uh, Uncle Sam hat. Right. Uh, and last night I did see on MSNBC a guy in an Uncle Sam suit was. Stilts. Oh my oh, God! God. I, All right, that's I just swear not right. My kid's life. That is not right. And Brian Williams is just the guy walks right by him in the shot. At least put the guy in stilts in all black. They don't even acknowledge the fact. So anyway, the Reagan Festival uh, continues. Uh, let me give you some good news. Right. Everybody needs some good news. Yeah, because yes, no matter please. what, whether it's a tourist attraction or not, it has been it has been kind of solemn and kind of a downer day. Well, Mike, uh, the national nightmare is over. My bathroom is finally completed enough. Oh, my God. That's right. I got the great news. Did you news. say completed enough? Completed enough. Oh, no. Mm. Now, hold on a sec. No, I'm going to take a half victory as a victory. Okay. <laughs> it is complete enough mm -hmm. for the three S's. 
Okay. Uh, the shower is done. Right. One of the vanities is in. Sure. And it has a functioning toilet. What, and so, so some finishing touches are needed. Oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that still has to be done, sure. but I don't care because I was finally able this morning, after over three months, to get out of my own bed and not have to walk down three flights of stairs to the basement to go have a, have a nice uh, number two. How was the shower? The shower is fa fantastic, phenomenal. Re phenomenal? Yeah. The water pressure. I know you're a water pressure oh, fan. I'm a water I'm pressure guy. I wouldn't say it's worth a three month wait. Mm -hmm. Right? But it was pretty good. Pretty intense? Good. It was pretty good. There was only one problem. What? I'm sure they're going to fix this. As I stepped into the shower, it was just thinking, oh, this has been three months of crap that my wife has put me through, but I guess it's worth it. Right? I started to notice that. The drain doesn't seem to be working. Oh no! And that, and the longer that it's usually kind of important in a shower. The longer that I'm standing in the shower, the more I realize the water level is now getting dangerously close to the top, where it's going to start spilling over on the oh, new floor, yeah. like a bath, like a bath. So, so, so there was some stuff down there. Well, they're gonna they're gonna handle that. They're gonna snake it out. They're, for you? they're gonna handle that. I but so. I think yeah, officially the national nightmare is over, and I'll be able to stop screaming about my Thank bathroom. God. Congratulations, because it's it's finally done. Uh, now there is another national nightmare that has started. It's it's already underway. It is the uh, the great c convention. It's my wife and Rob's wife mm -hmm. together. They've gotten away. The Marital Bliss Tour. They've gotten away for a brief uh, a brief time, but they'll be mourning the fact that they're still married to two great guys. Right. A, now, Robbie, this is like a short trip. It's like a, a one day. They'll be back tomorrow, right? Yes, but it'll seem much longer because it's tough to be away from the one you love. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine they'll be back before dinner time tomorrow. Because Carrie said she'd be back early, and that's usually about five. Dinner time means Sunday. <laughs> you just add about 12 hours. Okay. That's I think Frida's driving. I think they have to get back because tomorrow night is our uh, movie night. We're going to see right, the separate right. wife. Oh, and they're with, my son is with them as well. Robert. Oh, Robert is nice. with them. Oh, that's good. Bonding. So he could be with his godmother. godmother. Well, they're having a little bonding session down there. And I believe that they're going to either go out or stay in. Either way, I think they're drinking tonight. What will and Robert be drinking? A mother's milk. <laughs> Hello? Hey. Hi, oh, oh, it's Carrie. Carrie, hey. Hey, Carrie, hi. Hello. Hi, darling. Hello. How's your day? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful, but I have a son who will not sleep. Really? Oh, dear. He's been up all day. Michael. <laughs> yeah, hey, hold, hold on, Carrie. Is this Frida on the other line? Let me check this. Hold on a second. Hello? Hey, Carrie. Hey, sugar. Turn down your radio, honey. Wow. I did. So, hold on. That's pretty good. So, wait a minute. Carrie's at the house. Where are you? I just went to, I went to Grandma's to pick up a ladder. I got I got some uh, you know things to do at the house. Hey, we're so talking to Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Marcia, uh, give Marcia gave me some tips for being on the ladder, so uh, I wanted uh, to make sure that got squared away. So, Carrie, are you there? Yeah, I'm. I'm going through all the cabinets. <laughs> I know Frida's not that close, so I can, I can go through some more. So uh, I heard that you you girls will be drinking tonight. <laughs> I will. Carrie has promised for my birthday, that my birthday present, that she's going to get drunk tonight. Uh, wow! Oh, and, and honey, did you bring your tape recorder? Yes, I did. <laughs> ah, very good. Wait, hey. I can't wait. You know, I'm already getting quite the uh, quite a few inside secrets that I don't know that Rob wanted me to know. So I imagine it'll be really good tonight. Yeah, it should be good. America's in for a treat. You know, you might call Buzz. Well, like Joe did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll await your call. All right, well, girls, have a wonderful conference. <laughs> good. Thank you, my It's kind of different because they're, they're apart, right? Yeah, right. So yeah, you thought yeah. they'd be in the, in the same location. Just what well, time I'm almost that? back. I'm almost back. What? We're just in hanging draperies. What time do you ladies think you'll begin your imbibing? Well, um, you know, we might, Carrie, I've been thinking about this. What we might do, if we don't have a babysitter for Robert, is put him in the stroller and walk to some local cantinas, and that way, there you go. I'll be, you know, <laughs> that's the free to find uh, Rob, Rob do be a good way to pick up some guys. <laughs> don't make a face, Rob. I, I swear, swear to God, Frida will do it I know. because she did it with our kids. Sure, she would take she would take him all kinds of crazy places. All I can imagine is crooked stroller tracks from the bar to the house. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Either way, have a good time, girls. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Love, love you, honey. You love you emails it. tonight. Remember, don't leave any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, girls. Bye. 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 As you recall, the last time your wife got my wife drunk, Carrie sent emails. 
That's right. That I think just ended with like a long line of U's. And that was great evidence. <laughs> yeah. I said, never cover your tracks. It was an Always. electronic trail. <laughs> it was. So they're together. They're doing whatever it is that they're doing. Right. Yeah. Whatever that is. La they, La. They sound like they're they're kind of mellow right now. Oh, they're in La La Land. They'll get rowdy later. They're in La La friggin' Land. Rob and I both checked in after uh, Frida left to go pick up Carrie. Well, right. Price is 04. <laughs> Because in both houses, of course, you can't leave because there's always some crisis going. Mm -hmm. Right. So once they were finally gone, I said to Rob, you know, the best part of this is that they're not going to call us now for the next three hours mm -hmm. because they're just going to be yapping at each other. Exactly. Oh, it's the World Series of Talking right That's now. That's wonderful. <laughs> they both reached the top of their respective leagues, and now they're talking. But I got news for you. <laughs> Standing in, in the sideline, uh, on the sidelines, waiting to come out, is Big Frida. Oh, yeah, that's oh, the Pro yeah. Bowl of talking. They're going to be meeting up with my mother-in-law, uh -huh. and then it is going to be the last woman talking. <laughs> wow. Whoever's left passed out on the couch. Wherever it is in Ocean City, there's going to be a run on lozenges because there's going to be some tired tonsils They like tonight. to talk. Your, your wives like to talk, and I know your mother-in-law oh, likes to talk. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but you boys are. It sounds like. It sounds like. You boys will have a nice Friday night. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> yeah, you would. Hello, Roger. Yes, Roger. You're on the air. Hey, Roger. How you doing? We're doing great. Hey, I got a pro I know why your 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 bathtub backed up. It's the shower, but but why? Uh, well, the, yeah, because uh, all the dust you had in there from when you did all the construction. I had the same problem. Gotcha. All right, well, I hope they clean it up today. Thank you. I, I, I had the bathroom from hell, too. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right, see you later. Well, now you have the answer. Bye-bye. There you go. It's dust. Just mm -hmm. hop off the drain cap and go down and get the goo. Just go down and <laughs> grab the Just goo. Blow the, uh, blow, like blow, the, uh, blow the dust right out. Mm -hmm. You remember yesterday we had the guy on from the uh, chicken ranch in Las Vegas? Yes, uh, Bob Fisher. The right. guy that wants to... Hey, good that you remembered his name. I do. I, well, I'm, I've contracted with uh, Bob. <laughs> anyway, uh, he uh, had a menu. What am I his... talking about? I must tell you the truth. I uh, I gathered some friends, uh, some high dollar friends that I have, and uh, you know we're expanding it. Oh, that's great. You know, I told you I always wanted to do that. I wanted to have like a franchise thing. I wanted to have more than one. I find that hard. I it's find that be hard. O'Mara's Ranch. I find that hard to believe because you didn't have twelve dollars to pay for your, for your chicken today. Well, that's well, it's not my money, Don. You see, but uh, but the name will be there, O'Mara's Ranch, and the thirty girls I've already contacted also. Oh, that's great. You, you know, Buzz actually found the menu at this place, and that you know, back hard to believe, but pre -F, pre FCC. We would have pretty uh, pretty much been able to read everything on this menu. Right. There are 28 different items. Really? On the menu at this chicken ranch this guy wants to sell for uh, 7 million bucks. Uh, there's massage, exchange massage, breast massage, lingerie show, bubble bath, half and half. I wouldn't get into that tub. The fantasy <laughs> session, uh, frappe French, shower party, bondage dominance. Drag party, hot and cold, bungalow, in date. That's where a man may stay for extended periods of time, hmm. such as overnight yeah. with a lady in her room at the ranch. Yeah. There's the <laughs> audio delight. That's unique travels into the pleasures of sound. Huh. I don't know what you listen. Listen to different fantasies while enjoying your <coughs> favorite appetizer. Earlier, when you said something about drag, is that that's well, where a guy dresses up? Yeah, drag party. The man dresses up as a woman. Sure. Wow. That's what I asked for. What number was that? That was number. <laughs> <laughs> you and I, Rob. That was number twenty-one. Get us our ticket. That was number one. Choose for the larger woman. <laughs> you also might like. Number nine, the reversed half and half. The oversized pigeon sisters are here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rob and I come like waddling up the path. Hi, hello. <laughs> anyway, that's a uh, that's a good one. That's a good list, Buzz. And or you can order a la carte, I believe. Shower party. Yeah, Buzz, you always order a la carte. Don't yeah, you? I like to mix it up. And the shower party is not what you think. It's just before or after. The couple takes a shower together. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? Uh, you know, that whole end date, that must be awfully... I mean, even for the most seasoned prostitute, I would imagine, like, 24 mm -hmm. hours with the guy. No. You know, it's obviously not going to be pretty woman. Now that you own the place, I was hoping to stay a week. You can stay as long as you want, oh, Gratis. Thanks. Thanks. Well, what about the guy? I mean, unless it is someone like Julia Roberts, I mean, really... You're... Well, it's loneliness. Yeah, but, I mean, how lonely can you be? Incredibly lonely. There are people that are incredibly lonely out there. Especially for a gal named Diamond. 
<laughs> uh, Buzz has still got Diamond on the <laughs> for, brain. For a gal named Diamond. <laughs> yeah. Buzz. She was uh, one of the gals on the website. Yesterday. There was a picture of yeah, Diamond on the website that Buzz, Buzz enjoyed. She made a uh, a real impact. Made an impression. She made I, a real impression. See, now, this is not the same guy, is it, that came to our studios in Reno? Mm -mm. No. Not the same guy. That was the Bunny Ranch. That was the right. Bunny Ranch, and that's, that's where we... It, is the Bunny Ranch where we broadcast live from? Uh, that place was, that was it the like Mustang Ranch. The Adobe Huts. That was the Mustang Ranch, and remember, they made us delicious food out there. Yeah, yeah the they bunny, had a huge kitchen. Great kitchen. Oh, and the Bunny Ranch was where we had the, the one whore call her mom live on the air. Mustang and, Ranch is where that happened. Oh, the Mustang yes. Ranch. And tell her mom that she, she was a prostitute. And remember? it was very emotional right? and very, very it sad. Great it was moment. crying. Oh. Boy, we've had to a good time with a prostitute. You yeah. can see the Bunny Ranch on a series, I think it's on Showtime. There's oh, a really? Really? series set there with that same slimy cowboy hat guy that we loved speaking to. <laughs> so I'm looking at this menu that Buzz pulled off the internet. I'm thinking, you know, it, it, you go there, do you order it like McDonald's? I'll have the number seven, mm -hmm. the half and half. Do they give you like little boxes you can, uh, pardon the fun, <laughs> little boxes you can check off? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. They have an actual menu you yeah, can everything, fill out. Everything's just starting to sound dirty coming out of my mouth. I know. Hi, Chris. Not a mic show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hi, we're doing very well, thank you. Down to Mike Radio Guys. I'm, Howdy. I'm, I, I deliver in D.C., deliver some seafood, and I'm on my way out of town, and I don't know if it's the rain or if it's just the general sadness of today, but yesterday was so happy. Today's a lot like being at Disneyland, you know? Hold on, dude. Are you trying to make a joke or are you trying to make a statement? What are you trying to say here? As compared to yesterday when it was Disney World. The happy sediment, I suppose. Okay, the word I want you to say starts with E and ends with T. Can you guess what the word is? That word eject. Eject. There you go. Yes. You got it. He knew the word. There you go. Yeah, he got, he got credit. He, he got to keep out of the book by saying eject. You saved yourself. Speaking of seafood delivery, I think you can find that on the menu as well. That's Friday. That's <laughs> Friday. Let's change things up. We never do a phone scan this early. Wow. I think this is a brilliant call. Right? We never do a phone scan this early. We'll do it here. This is good. These will be up-tempo, happy people. I predict good things out of this phone scan, Don. Anybody can call from anywhere. These calls are in screen date 877 365 3636 from Canada, 800 636 1067. We never, 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 never do it, but we'll do it today. What the hell? For the Gipper. Yeah. 877 365 3636. This phone scan dedicated. To Kirk Douglas. Yeah. You still have the Kirk Douglas. Put it away already? I'll tell you while Rob looks for that tape. In our next segment after the phone scan. Uh -huh. Right. We're going to have point counterpoint. Oh, this is going to be a good one. 800 pound guy. Right. In a uh, hospital in New York. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be counseled by a 375 pound guy. Who used to weigh 800 pounds. 800 pounds. Uh, right. That's after the phone scan, which is after... The commercials, which is after Kirk Douglas. Green is good. Thank Thanks. you, Kirk. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. I paid them up the plant's gone, too. Yep. Oh, come on, damn it. Oh, that sounds good. Melt the chocolate inside the deck. That really ups the resale value. I think he's going to be okay here. They have a thin candy shell. Hmm. I'm surprised you didn't know that. I think your brain has a thick candy shell. Your, um, your brain has a shell on it. Are you talking? Shut up, Richard. The Don and Mike Show. Rated PG. Pretty good. The Don and Mike Show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And did, uh... Everybody watch that ball game last night? I didn't mention that at the beginning of the show. Big uh, picture of Hannibal Lecter on the cover of the sports here. You know, they had, they had the original bad boys there. Uh -huh. They had uh, Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambeer and Joe Dumars. The only original bad boy from the Detroit Pistons didn't show up was uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman wasn't uh, there? And remember, when he played with the uh, Pistons, he was just Dennis Rodman. Right. He w didn't wear dresses. He, he didn't... Uh, Wear wedding gowns. Well, he, he made his name with the Chicago Bulls. He didn't right. paint his hair. He was just the toughest rebounder in the NBA. I'll tell you this. If the Pistons play that kind of D, there's not going to be much room for a Lakers championship. <laughs> Somebody read the sports page. No, I didn't. I just looked at the score. 
Oh, yeah. And what, they, they shut them down with a like, 20-point victory or something at the, like that? At the end of the first half, I think the Lakers had... 29 points. Yeah, at I mean, the end of the been, first half. Well, it's been a low, uh, low scoring final anyway. That's that smothering defense. Yes, that's what it is. That's it's fantastic. And who doesn't love watching the Lakers fall apart? And you know, I say that knowing full well they'll probably come back and they'll probably end up winning the series. Even as a non basketball fan, though, as far as the fans are concerned, don't you want to see high scoring and coming right down to the wire? No. I mean, it would seem no, that no, when, no. I look at, when I look at the score, which was what it was, uh, 88 to 68. I mean, isn't that boring? No, no, it's fantastic. <laughs> you know why it's fantastic? Because you have a, a team like the Lakers that's used to running down and just saying, "Hey, if we get in a slump, we we can pull it out. We can run off 15 points like that." And what's great is that Detroit just shuts them down. And they can't do anything. No. The the only complaint I have, please, less Stuart Scott. I mean, I'm Stuart... Booyah! I'm Stuart Scotted out. <laughs> Stuart Scott, who I think holds the record as an individual we have interviewed who took himself... Way too seriously. So seriously. That I think he took himself the most seriously of anyone that we have ever interviewed. I really do believe that. And I think, if I remember, the day he wanted to cut out of the interview was because he had to go to the weight room. Yeah, he had to go pump iron. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to do our little lighthearted thing with him, and he was just Johnny serious. I mean, I like the guys calling the games. Even Al Michaels is surprisingly okay. Right. Do you believe in miracles? Doc Rivers is a good analyst. Then they've got the girl, and Stuart Scott is like the other girl. He's the sideline reporter. Right. Except Stuart Scott, just, you know, the, the thing is, he'll talk, and then the game starts. Right. And you know he's looking at a monitor. He could just look out of the court, and say, but he's still talking. Sure. Still doing a story. And what's up with those glasses with Stuart Scott also? <laughs> he's, got, he's got eye issues. Doesn't he? Oh, yeah, you know what? He really got You're right, no, he does. Issues. He does. Like Jim McMahon, he's got the eye issues. Exactly. Like that. Right. All right, no. well then. But it's not sunglasses. It's simply, it's the style of the glasses that, oh, I, well, that I'm critiquing. He's a stylish man. 865-3636. Phone scan. Hello? Hello? Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, Don and Mike. How y'all doing? Hi, you. We're doing great. Hello, uh, Buzz. I meant to ask, um, about a week ago... I guess when uh, Marsha fell off the ladder there. Yeah, fell off. That's uh, funny. Y'all were y'all were had uh, Buzz like it was in a trial there. Yes. One question that was never asked: Did Buzz? Did you fondle her while she was out? Did you fondle your wife when she was uh, out? Your wife was when she was not conscious. That's that's one question I'm not going to answer. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. She she laid in a heaping pile. <laughs> that's the first thing that Buzz thought. No, actually, <laughs> I, I can cop a feel from my wife touching myself. Right? Hello, hello, Don and Mike. Hello. There she was, lying on the ground, unconscious, begging for further fondling. <laughs> hello, Andy, Rob. Hey. I know how the Lakers. Wait, wait, wait! Hold on. Oh, yeah. you, you started your call with something none of us understood. Start all over again. Okay, Don, Mike, Buzz, and Candy, Rob. How's it going? Oh, we oh, see we didn't hear the fourth part. Okay, Candy, Candy Rob. Hey, uh, I think he's giving Rob a nickname. No, no. Well, why? Why did what? you say Candy Rob? Yeah. Remember my show? Oh, yeah. Candy <laughs> Rob, suck this. Yeah, suck this. Oh, one time Rob had a show, mm -hmm. a one day show on WJFK. It was a special. Hey, was that with your friend Brad that you did that show? A show all about candy. It was called but Suck This. This caller, I mean, deserves credit because you remember Rob's show. It was a great show. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, what can we do for you? Hey, I, I know the way uh, the Lakers can bounce back. Is this a Kobe joke? No, it's 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 actual uh, uh, offense. It, they they can stop running jack plays. Okay. All right, uh, get out of here. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello, hello, and, 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 yeah, and then and then silence always after a call like always. that. The guy could have made it work if he just would have spit it out to begin. I got two guys, Sean Payton and Mike Zimmer. You got to keep an eye on those two because they're going to try to get the upper hand on. Mike wants the defense to do well. Yeah, and Sean, he's going to have a few. Jap plays. No disrespect to the Orientals, but what we call Jap plays. Jap plays. Okay. Mm -hmm. Surprise things. No disrespect. And, uh, no disrespect to anyone. Jap plays. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike Show. Wow. Hello, hi, Don and Mike. Hey, hi, you're on the air. Uh, I got some breaking news from Channel 5. All right. Uh, former President Ronald Reagan is still dead. Thank you. you know, he was a, supposed to. Here's a question. Seriously, now that. Uh, 
the box has left. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have the channels, have the local channels here in D.C. gone back to cartoons or whatever they run? Let me check. <laughs> Buzz, if, if you could check. Sure. I know Channel 5 runs like that. That's very heavy Friday afternoon cartoon schedule. There you go. <laughs> I'd like to know when they're going to rebroadcast Hollywood Squares. Yes, they're back to their regular programming. And what is Channel 5 running? Is it a cartoon? Uh, uh, Judge Joe Brown. Hey, everybody get up! <laughs> it's the Hollywood Squares! By the way, I have the celebrities you were asking about at the funeral. Yes. Uh, uh, not only Kirk Douglas, but uh, Charlton Heston, who also suffers right. from Alzheimer's. Both Heston's, really? Both Heston's were there. Uh, Tom Selleck, Bo Derek, Bob Hope's widow Dolores, and Frank Sinatra's widow Barbara, along with Frank's kids Tina and Nancy. Yeah. We're all at the funeral. Is that the list? That's the list I have so far, yes. Wow. There were a lot more, too. It, it, and Bo Derek is the one that, that caught my eye. Well, right. you know, sure. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, but what the hell is she doing there? She's big Republican. You know what I mean? And incidentally, like we don't hate France enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice going, Josh Sherrock. Didn't show? Yeah. Would it have killed you? Would it have killed you to come over here, you son of a bitch? Jacques Chirac, Jacques Chirac didn't show up? He did not. I thought he was in uh, Georgia. No, he sent like Pepe Le Pew or something. Wasn't he, I, Wasn't he, he in Georgia <laughs> for the G8 summit? Yes. But he did not. So he could have just come up the coast. Right. Of course. He's not there. Very busy. Wow. Because he's from France. And that is it. I would not have any of the big people me. <laughs> As when, I, when I saw one of the people on, uh, I think on Fox News today, that's where they draw the line. They're interviewing people in the crowd. And some guy was wearing a shirt that said, France sucks dot com. Um, right, and she said to him, "I'm sorry, we can't interview you with that shirt on." You like. <laughs> meanwhile, you've right. got guys in the background that have Mardi Gras beads on, right. you know, doing shooters out of girls' belly buttons. <laughs> but you can't have the guy with the shirt that says Frank, "France sucks." Well, that's gone. where we draw the line. Right. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, guys? Okay. Troy from Madison. Hi there. How's it going? I got a little story about Stuart Scott. You know why his eye is messed up? Is because. Um, about three years ago, he was doing like an on-site interview at a, like the training camp for football, and he got hit in the eye by a football, and he needed yeah. surgery. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, I yeah. remember we had that story. Wow, yeah, that's true. I think it was one of those uh, jugs machines. Really, booyah! You know uh, those things. Well, jugs guns are uh, like they, they a radar gun. No, no, but they have a similar thing, a similar name. Maybe get the name wrong. What's the thing in football where you got the two tires that spin around? Well, it throws football. I don't know the name of the machine, but I know what you're. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. I guess about. it's not a jug. So, excuse me, I've got the other place on my mind. The, uh, <laughs> chicken ranch. The chicken ranch. ranch. Is it called a bicycle? Is it called a bicycle? That's the machine with two wheels that spins. <laughs> Rob. Hi, Mike. Hello. Happy Friday, everybody. Hello, Don and Mike. Yeah, that's it, Rob. It's called a bicycle. Friday, or, or as we call it around here, we'll try anything. <laughs> Give yeah. it sticks. Just get to the microphone. Throw all it the, out there. All the quarterbacks want that new tool. Give me that bicycle. The bicycle. And then they use the same technology with uh, baseball pitching machines, where they've got that, that white tire that spins around. Round and round very fast. Hello, Don and Mike. <laughs> Good Friday, gentlemen. Good Friday to you, sir. Um, do you think you guys have some tools on American Idol? Well, we just started as Canadian Idol in Toronto, and you guys got to check us out Tuesdays and Wednesdays for us. You see some, you get a good laugh if you wish. <laughs> it sounds like the Canadian Bill Murray sound. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you right now, when I did Garfield, <laughs> Canadian Idol, <laughs> there you go, Canadian Idol, uh -huh. <laughs> um, you know, actually, you're very hard to understand, but we would love some tapes of Canadian Idol. Sure. We'd love it. Is it as bad as American Idol? Uh, it's a little bit worse. I don't know if you guys would know what newbies are. They... Very, newbies, very, yeah, newbies. Irishman. I can explain what newbies Good. are. Newbies are it's kind of a derogatory term that uh, that that a, oh. a large portion of Canada uses for people up like uh, around Nova Scotia and areas like that, right? Yeah, well, they come from Newfoundland. Newfoundland, I'm sorry, Newfoundland, Newfoundland right? right. Newfoundland. The newbies. It's a little island where it's like they're their own own people out there. You know what rhymes with newfies? Uh, yes, roofies. <laughs> that occurred to me. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> Slow down. Happy Friday. <laughs> Who's got the roofie? <laughs> Mike, that beverage you're drinking? Yes. You've already started. Oh, oh, my God. Before the end of the show, we will have you out of your shirt again. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey. I was wondering why I was so attracted to your Green Bay Factors turtle, Mike. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to hang up with that guy from Canada. It was a bad I found out new, new piece I found out when I was uh, hanging around with a lot of NHL players. That, uh. that, that is kind of like the... Uh, it's almost like the Polish joke exactly. uh, in, in the United States. That's where they they, they make new, they have newfie jokes and all this. And this guy's from Newfoundland, Poland. The very yeah. don't don't know any of these Polish jokes you're speaking. Well, of. you find them all if you they're all on the wall if you go to Polak Johnny's. <laughs> Hello, Don and Mike show. But don't ask for any ice cubes up there. You hey, know why that is? Because yes. <laughs> the guy with the recipe died.
<laughs> Do a Google search for Polak jokes. All right. Just see what comes up. Hi, Don and Mike show. <laughs> I mean, because it's so back in the day. Yeah, it is. It was it was Polak jokes, then it was blonde jokes. Right, right. Now there's okay. been nothing to take the... Polak slash blonde joke. Well, hole. I think it's come around full circle to Helen Keller again. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know how the Polak broke his arm raking leaves? Ow. He fell out of, of the tree. tree. Yeah, out of bang. Hello, Don and Mike. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, this is Lisa calling from Baltimore. Hi there, Lisa. I just wanted to let all of your dear callers know that are traveling on 95 South, that cop that's standing there, he's not holding a radar gun in his hand, he's playing video games on his phone. The well, cop is actually playing well, video games? Yeah, I was sitting there in traffic watching him. So, wait a minute. You really think he's playing video games? I am 100% sure. Wow. <laughs> now, is he standing outside the vehicle or, or inside the car? No, he's inside the car right before the split between 95 and 895. And did you get close enough to him to observe what he was doing? Yeah, because I was going 95 north and we were stuck in traffic. So, all you people going southbound, you don't need to slow down because he's just playing video games. <laughs> all right, thank you. you. You know what you are? You're a cartooner. <laughs> You're a cartooner here on the Don and Mike Good to go. Excellent. Uh, hello, Don and Mike Show. Don and Mike. Howdy. Dino from Mustang Ranch. I want to let you know your rooms, your meals, come. Uh, <laughs> all right. Gino. Hello, Don and Mike. Don and Mike, what's yeah. up? Hey. Radio Gods. Hi. Hey, I got a couple questions for you. Well, yes, sir. more requests than anything. Hey, I was wondering if you guys can do the old thing you used to do with Don when you would ring Buzz Burbank in and play the, the just wash your ass today. Can you guys do that or not? No, in case you didn't hear, around February, we, we made a couple of very subtle changes yeah, to the show. But one of those subtle changes would involve we don't play the tape anymore where it says, Buzz, wash your ass today. I never said yeah. Buzz either. No. It, was, it was just a. Uh... But it was always implied it was for Buzz. At least, <laughs> at least this caller caught the subtlety of that. That <laughs> was always implied, hey. and and rightly so. Hello, Tony. <laughs> and you know, sadly, without that daily reminder, uh, I, can't, I can't tell you. Well, it, it's been awfully unpleasant. I appreciate you. the help. <laughs> Hello. Let me just say, I know when it, the temperature goes above ninety. <laughs> I feel better. I know that. <laughs> the human thermometer. <laughs> Hello, Tony and Mike show. <laughs> Are you still doing that Google search, Buzz? Yeah, I am. I found a number of, of websites, so and I'm having a little trouble getting any jokes of them. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. You're on the air. Hi. Fratellius knock the bolt, and Fratellius the bolt, and Yavul. Ravi was obviously. Hi, this is Wolfgang Juretzek from German. German. Never forget Any idea? Well, the Don and Mike show. Mary had a little lamb. I should warn everyone right now that we are uh, entering weekend plan there. Hello, yeah. Don and Mike show. Merit's thought. Merit, well, what? what he said merits discussion. I don't necessarily agree with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> he must have said did, did you translate or something like yeah, that? Of course I did. My, as you know, I speak fluent German. You <laughs> can see the pro and the con. But she jot down what he said. I have no idea. You have no Hello. idea. Hello. Don and Mike show. Hello. Uh, hello. Good afternoon. I, I want to give uh, kudos to Mr. Joe Ardinger. Uh, well, um, listen, who are Michael Elton. I'm sorry. Joe Ardinger. Well, now you know when you play one out of place, you got to play them all. You know, Michael Elton is the Joe Ardinger. I'll get it this time. Michael Elton is the Joe Ardinger. Michael Elton and Joe Ardinger. Michael Mera. Michael Sores. Ross B. Wack. Don Geronimo. And let me see. Oh, we don't have one for Beth Ann yet. No. Getting one oh, for her. Oh, good. Getting one for her. Now to be Beth Ann or B.A. McBride? B.A. McBride. Yeah. B.A. McBride. I like that. Plays more music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyway, what can we do for you? Um, about yeah. Joe. You want to talk about Joe? Yeah, the, uh, the, the best of show that he does. I'm not a radio guy, but I think he does a really good job. He has a lot of fun, and I wanted to give him kudos for it. Well, that's fine, that's and I'm, nice. I'm sure he appreciates that, and I'm sure that he would thank you personally if he was here, and I'm, I guess I'll speak for Joe, and I will thank you, dumbass. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> or just hang up. Yeah. Well, Hi there. Joe Etiquette. Don and Mike show. <laughs> Hello. Darren. Jen. Hello. Don, Mike. Yeah. Just hey. had Gus from Gus's Garage. <laughs> I just wanted to find out who thought it was a good idea to put my voice on the radio. You know, let me stop you. <laughs> I you. you know, let me, let me, I just, 
Speaking about impressions, really, because all impressions are more like characterizations. Right. You, you make it your own. This guy has made Pat Goss his own, I and I'm giving him thumbs up. I disagree. I think he's. I mean, really, I was just. It's just making you. me laugh because oh. it's not like Pat Goss. Right. He's doing a perfect impression of Ted Koppel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do it again. Talk about the Reynolds Reagan funeral using that same voice, please. And now we see the plane taxi down the runway. Say, this is Ted Koppel. <laughs> Here's what I like about it. It's nothing like Pat Goss. It's Nightline. <laughs> Ted Koppel. Hey, uh, one yes. time you guys saw my ex-girlfriend's hoo-ha when you had the best-looking contest. Is everybody going to go back down memory lane Probably today? So. Well, anyway, I just want to let you know, she waited on you, on Don, at a, at a restaurant around here. I won't name the restaurant, but... Just it was uh, go of, ahead, uh, I hop. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she waited on me in a restaurant. I was yeah. there, with, obviously, with my wife, or what? Yes, yeah, you were with oh, your wife. Yeah, and? Well, it just—it was after you'd already seen it, and so and sorry, you usually wonder, you know, about you know, maybe maybe your waitress or whoever what it looks like, and you already knew. <laughs> did you? Did you have? A, do you ever remember a, an experience where a waitress was waiting on you, and she had been in here, and you had seen them? Never. And uh, never. I've had that happen to me. I have it, but I had it happen to me at a Hooters restaurant. Ah, hey, where the uh, where, where the waiter the waitress at Hooters had been in here, and I had seen her. Half gotcha. Naked. Yeah. No, I don't remember that, sir. All right, well, I have one more imitation for you guys. You ready? Yeah. He was. Okay. <laughs> Hi there, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, this is Tim. I'm calling from Virginia Beach. Hi there, Tim. You're on the air. Great. First time caller. Can't believe I got through. Thanks. We don't need the bio. What can we do for you? <laughs> Actually, I was looking to see if you have anything that I can give away at a great golf tournament down here for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Oh, you know, um, let me think about that because, you know, you really put us in a bad uh, spot when you call on the air to ask for something. That's usually something you might want to call about. Uh, well, when is the golf tournament? I was shocked that I actually got through. This when is the golf tournament, as I said before? July 17th. Yeah, how, how about you pass along our very best wishes to everybody? And call the business office. Yeah, seriously, that's the way to do that. you got plenty of time for your golf tournament. Call the business call office. Call Alan Line One. Mm -hmm. He's the general manager. He doesn't do anything around here. He'll he's get got, you whatever you need. He's got plenty of time to help you. Pictures of Brian Riley, the works. Okay? Love your show. Thanks. Thank you. We're not the Red Cross. See you Lift later. Feels bad to go. Hello. I'll speak. PG forty four K is an amazing product. There he is. There he amazing is. product. Hello. Oh. PG products. Don and Mike, hello. Gas prices in history. Low gas mileage is not an option. Not an option. There he is. Pat Goss, the big boss of the hot sauce. Who is it? Is it Pat Goss or Ted Goffel? Okay, removes fuel system deposits and restores performance and efficiency. I'd like to restore my own performance. I'll promote the Pat Goss golf tournament. Of course you will. That's what you're supposed to do. It's a hole in one. And, uh, join me this weekend for the Boxes Finally Left Town golf uh, match we're having. Lots of tournaments all around the area. The box is gone. Big party. My wife, thank you, Rob. Kudos to my wife. Bonnie. Bonnie. Hello. To Bonnie, my wife. Donnie. Uh, Donnie and Mikey. He said Bonnie. I was going to say Don. Donnie. 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 Bonnie. Don and Mike show. Hello. And, of course, all, Hello, Don, Mike. all week, Ronnie. Hi there. <laughs> You're on the air. Good afternoon, Don and Mike. Hey, a Pollock stepped Warren, in the couch. Warren calling from Pennsylvania. Hey, Warren, hold on a second here. Okay. A Pollock stepped in the cow pie and started crying. He thought he was melting. Hey, did you hear about the Polish fish? No. It drowned. Have you heard about the Pollock cocktail? No. Perrier and water. Have you heard about the Pollock kamikaze pilot? He flew 39 missions. Have you heard the Pollock knock-knock joke? No. Say knock-knock. Knock-knock. Who's there? Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know, now I'm beginning to realize why these went out of style. <laughs> What's the most popular Pollock fast food restaurant? What? Booger King? Mm hmm What's the most useless thing on a woman? What? A Pollock? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, do you get the impression they've taken, like, uh, jokes from other genres sure. and tried to force them into the Polish? But no, there, there are some. Hold on. What does it say on the bottom of Polish... Pepsi bottles. What? Open other end. Mm -hmm. uh, why are... Oh, I can't read that one. No. <laughs> why are Pollocks the only ones who eat... Um, uh, what? What? Why? <laughs> toilet stuff. Why? Because they're the only ones who know how to cook it. 
Oh, wow. That's harsh. Yeah, that is way harsh. Why couldn't the Polak change a light bulb? He didn't, uh, oh, I don't, I don't know. All he had was a $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> Why does the Polak carry a little turd in his pocket? Why? For identification. Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> Why is there glass in front of the monkey cage at the Polak Zoo? Why? Polak's throw crap at them. Oh, man. Wow. Why were the Polak troops sent to uh, Why were the Polak troops sent to Iraq all women? Why? They thought it was the battle of all mothers. Wow. But these yeah. were these are from the internet. Aren't they good? Well, what happened to the old fashioned good Polak jokes? I don't know. I, I mean that's them. This is them? I think so. It's a lot of them or the basis for a lot of them. How do you know when a Polak has been in your back? Mike, here's a prime example of taking like a West Virginia joke right. and turning it into a Polak joke. It works either way. How do you know when a West Virginian's been in your backyard? Uh, your, your garbage is gone and your dog is pregnant. Yeah, uh, See, that's a yeah, West boo, Virginia yeah. joke. Uh, uh, boo, boo. All converted, yeah. Oh, come on, Google. Come give on. Us, give us some good Polak jokes, Google. Google. <laughs> Google. Google. Google me. Google. Hello. Hi, Don and Mike. Yeah, thank, thank you for waiting. From Pennsylvania. Right. No problem. I just wanted to give a, a uh, kudos to Rob. He is one of the funniest guys you guys got on that show. He has right. a lot. I he disagree. I disagree. <laughs> I totally disagree. <laughs> I, I'm. How many years has he been working on this show? Too many. Not not once has he made me laugh out. Me loud. either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't find him I, amusing. I, I love you guys. Just wanted to tell you. You, you know what? Time the good. I'll tell you what. But my relationship with Rob Spiewak. You know what it is? Mm. Tax write off. Absolutely. Uh, you know, charity starts at home. Hey, when you want to talk, funny, hire the handicap. When you want to talk funny, you're talking Alan Lime one. <laughs> All right, thanks, Don Mike. Hey, Rob, he's no good. No way. You know who's good? Joe. He's good. Yeah, that's funny. Now I'm laughing. Hello. Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hi there. You're on the air. Hi. I just wanted to say call and say hi. I'm actually calling from Seattle, listening to you on JFK through a cell phone in Washington, D.C. Wow. Wow. That's, that's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be. Well, but I actually listened to you in the afternoons with my boyfriend, and I just want to say hi to Mark. All right, there you go. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, see, she spent a lot of money. She, so she's in Seattle where we used to be. Right. Let me guess. Is, is the Bobby Sherman record? Yeah. Is that what you, you just found? No. We got canceled there. We got canceled there. I'm not going to throw that. Yeah, the hell, hell with that. Yeah. The name wasn't Karen. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hi, Don and Mike. Hi hey, there. I, I just wanted to let you know that even though it's my birthday, Don, I'm so glad you have your bathroom back and was able to have your BM today. What an Happy amazing. Happy birthday. What an to amazing, me. amazing supplement. <laughs> delightful. She's the last caller on the phone scan as well. Oh, thank you. On your birthday, uh, what is uh, your name? My name is Ginger, and I'm calling from Portland. From and Mike, I can hook you up with some lobster, so... Oh, I'll... Portland, Maine, a beautiful, beautiful city. And Ginger, you don't hear that name uh, very often. Uh, Ginger? Ginger is a kid, great as an adult. Uh, G Ginger, <laughs> happy birthday. Thank and, and you, what, gentlemen. What girl doesn't want to celebrate with a 7-Eleven Big Bite and a Super Gulp Big a Super Big Gulp Prize Pack? Mm -hmm. Wonder. Woo! Including. And can God tell me Happy Birthday? Including. Hold on, just oh. settle down. I have to read the commercial. <laughs> a twenty-five dollars 7-Eleven convenience card. Right. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. And now, uh, by request, here is your gigolo. Happy Birthday, Ginger. Thank you, baby. <laughs> you know any good Polak jokes? <laughs> no, but as a blonde, I've heard my fair share of those. Yeah. You, you got a blonde joke off you the top it? of your head? I'll give you another prize if you've got, if you've got one. What do you call two blondes in a freezer? What? Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Oh. you got to give her a prize. She had a joke. She delivered. It doesn't matter. It didn't have to be a good joke. She just had it. <laughs> Congratulations. You have won. Thank you. You have won two Seven Eleven big bites. Oh, <laughs> oh, man, come on. Two super big gold prize bags. Jeez. Well, now she's won fifty dollars worth of Seven wow. Eleven convenience cards. Nothing better in there, huh? Woo! I'm not saying there's nothing better, Mike. It's her birthday. I'm not saying there's nothing better, but it's I'm her saying, birthday. Saying. What if she comes up with one more blonde joke? Well, do you have? Why do blondes wash their hair in the sink? Why? Why? Isn't that where you wash all the vegetables? There you go. It, it counted. She had it. Again, she delivered. <laughs>
It's a three. Don't give her three seven eleven. You've won three seven eleven. Oh, come on. <laughs> three seven eleven big bite and super big golf prize packs. Now you've won seventy five dollars worth of seven eleven convenience cards. Woo! There you go. Happy birthday to me. That's awesome. There's, no, there's nothing in there. Yeah, and, you know what? and guys, talking to all of you is just present enough on my birthday. And but trust, I want to keep the prizes anyway. And trust me, Don did the very best he could for you there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> really. Take that $75 and, and you know, <laughs> walk into the 7-Eleven. I've got $150 worth. <laughs> Woo! Happy birthday. Thank you for listening. Thank you, guys. Hold, hold on. Hold on a second. Now, who says we don't do good on this show? When right. we come back... Point, counterpoint, intervention. Good. Oh, boy. Let me get the story. Okay. So we've got, this get is the, the public service. Get the story out. We've got it set up correctly. The 800-pound guy. The Did Nopa guy. Okay, the here's the... Uh... Did you ever suck the <laughs> jelly out of a jelly donut uh -huh. and then fill it with chocolate swirl ice cream? All right, Larry Cooper <laughs> weighs 900 pounds. Wow. Coop to his friends. Yeah. You gotta call anybody named Cooper. Coop. He's uh six one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so he's tall. Six one like weighs nine hundred pounds. It's nine hundred now? Nine hundred, according to the New York Daily News. Wow. All right. He always liked being big. Right. He never saw a problem with weighing nine hundred pounds until recently. When doctors said you might have some problems. Mm. Uh actually his troubles began in nineteen ninety four. When he was shot in the leg, oh. and he could no longer dance. That's how he used to exercise, by dancing. Oh, really? Well, he got shot in the leg. I can understand that. And at the time when he was dancing to lose weight, he weighed 400 pounds. <laughs> now, no wonder he got shot. Now since, <laughs> now, since he got shot and he can't dance, he's uh -huh. ballooned up to 800 pounds. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, <laughs> Firefighters wow. use nets. <laughs> to it's been a long time since we've had one. Firefighters use nets to bring him down five flights from his home wow. to get him into the ambulance to get him into the hospital. Nets? Nets. Mm -hmm. Firefighters use nets. Really? And uh, what we're going to do is get the guy on from the hospital. The mm -hmm. nine eight hundred. It, well, it says eight hundred somewhere. It says nine hundred pounds here. We're going to get him and. We've also booked a motivational weight loss expert. Oh, good. And as it turns out, the guy that, that, we're, that, we're, that we've booked also has weighed 800 pounds. And he's down to 375. <laughs> and at that point, <laughs> what's the point? I mean, I'm not going to say this to the guy's face. Sure. Let's say you weigh, eight, you weigh 800. But imagine you weigh 800. losing almost 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. And you still weigh four hundred pounds. Yeah, and there are still that kind of sucks. There still are a lot of things that you just can never imagine doing in your life. Sure. But listen, we're going to try to do good here. Good with the nine hundred pound man who had to be taken out of his home with the firemen and their nets. He's in the hospital, and we've got the guy who used to weigh eight hundred pounds, who's going to give him the Richard Simmons. Come on, you can do it. Speech. That's a good thing. On how he can get all the way down to three seventy five. Or even more. So we'll be back. Get ready for a real Oprah Winfrey type segment. Fantastic. On our show. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'd love to just have one thing go right today. And there. Thank you. That was it. He's the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Jesus. Do not drink any alcoholic beverages. Do not eat butter, margarine, oils, lard, or fat of any kind. Do not eat fried foods. Do not eat bread. Do not eat bananas, grapes, watermelon, or any fruits other than grapefruit or cantaloupe. Do not eat spaghetti or macaroni of any kind. Do not eat pizza. Uh -huh. Do not eat popcorn, potato uh -huh. chips, or pretzels. Oh, Do on. not eat puddings or custards. Oh, my. Do not eat ice cream, frozen yeah. custard, or frozen yogurt. You're killing me. Do not eat cookies, pies, cakes, pancakes, waffles, or any baked goods. Mike's crying. Do not eat chocolate, <laughs> caramel, fudge, nougat, nuts. <laughs> Nougat and Mike Show. Nougat. Did you ever suck the jelly out of the jelly donut and then fill it with chocolate swirl ice cream? We apologize in advance for Don Geronimo and Michael Miller. All right, get ready for. You know, Oprah has that thing, Oprah's Angels. Yes. Right. I don't know what we're calling this. Don. I don't Mike's devil. <laughs> Not Oprah's angels. Um, no, actually, we're going to try to do some good here. Good. 900-pound man vows he will dance the weight off. 
Uh, Larry Cooper is the guy that weighs 900 pounds. He had been down to 400 until he got shot. And then he couldn't dance anymore. Then he put 500 pounds on. Wow. A uh, guy that wants to help him is named uh, it, Tiny. Tiny Villafane. And uh, Tiny Villafane used to weigh 800 pounds. And now he weighs 375. He's Ooh. down to 375. Good for him. So uh, let me, we got one of the guys on the phone now. I think it's uh, Tiny. Hey, Tiny. Yes, sir. What's up? How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. Very well. So you, uh, you at one time weighed uh, how much? 800? 840. Hmm. 840. 840 and you... You knocked all that weight off. Yes, I did. And then what's your goal weight? Um, I was said I was trying for like uh, 225. And uh, and have you, uh, uh, now that you're 375, are you going to continue on to 225? Are you still doing I'm it? I'm trying to. I've gone, I've gone through numerous amounts of surgery to, uh, to take off the extra ex excess fat uh, that I oh. couldn't get rid of no matter how much exercise I did. It was too stretched. Oh, right. That's right. Cause you're is, that, is that skin or is it fat? Skin and fat, both. Mm -hmm. Boy. Now, this, the guy that we're trying to get on the phone from his hospital room now, right. Larry Cooper, is the guy that weighs 900 pounds. He's, they told me 800. Well, 8, they, 800, all right. New York Daily News says 900, but, you know, how about we meet in the middle at 850? Okay. Um, or, you know what, as they say at Burger King, have it your way. 800. 800. Let's say he weighs 800 pounds. If we get this guy on the line, what are, what are you going to tell him, Tiny? Well, uh, I had to go through a lot to... Uh, uh, they had to take him from five floor, the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he got me from the first floor. Ah, oh, so, and uh, did it they was take kinda, the, it's kind of tough to bring somebody down at uh, eight hundred pounds they, down a five flights of stairs. Did they have uh -huh. to use? Did the firemen have to use the nets to get you out of they your had place? Had to use the safety net for me also. I was too big for the stretcher. Wow, yeah, the a safety net. How did that work? How many firemen carried you out? Uh, about eleven firemen and two police officers. All right, get ready now. Then we're gonna do some good. Joining us now from his hospital in New York. Here is Larry Cooper. Larry. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Larry, now, if you don't mind, uh, because we'd like to get another Don and Mike success story going here with our angel program. Right. Can we ask, do you, the New York Daily News says you say says you weigh 900 pounds. Uh, we've heard you weigh 800. But do you, uh, Larry, do you know what the weight is? Uh, it's 800? Yes. Yeah. 800. Eight, eight hundred. Eight change. Eight and change. Eight and change. Eight hundred and change. All right. And, uh, we understand that uh, before you were uh, accidentally shot, uh, that you used to uh, d dance and, and your weight was down to a, a controllable uh, four hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, what would you? Uh, well, first off, have you met Tiny, the guy that wants to help you? No. Uh, well, I think we got a different type of situation. You love you love your weight? Yeah, well, I just say, you know, like anything can get out of control, you know. Anything can get out of control. Are yeah. you, do you want to put Tiny on with Larry? Oh, yeah, no, they're both on together. Tiny, right? Tiny, say hi to Larry. How you doing, Larry? How you doing, my brother? All right, pretty good. All right, that's good. That's good. Nice to see you. Yeah, bro. Well, Larry, I got the same problem you had when uh, when I weighed 840. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't walk much, uh, shortness of breath real quick. Yeah. Couldn't do much. And I stayed in my room all day. Yeah. Only to use the the bathroom and the shower. Mm -hmm. well, and, uh, got a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> Couldn't do much at all. Got a lot of much. Uh, I tried to go out. Uh, if I went outside, I could only walk. Uh, I could only walk uh, a couple of steps before I ran out of breath. Wow. But see, if, if it happens, you know, nobody knows when it happened. That really wasn't my fault. This did happen. So see, I would have had it you know, under control. If, you know, I had the right people not trying to play God with my life. Huh. Understand? What? Hold on. That's a different story with me. Uh -huh. I had people trying to play God with my life. Yeah, right. tra people trying to play God with your life. What do you mean by that, Larry? Um, uh, you know, just to, uh, two people like Mount Sinai visit the nurse um, program uh -huh. and um, Zeman a uh, wheelchair special. They ain't give me what I was supposed to, that I deserved. I, 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 I don't follow a word. It's I'm like talking kidding. to Larry Flint. I'm not kidding. Um, uh, Larry? Yeah. Larry, on your worst, how many meals would you eat in one day? 
after you were shot, Larry, how, how many meals would you eat in a day? I mean, <laughs> And now, Tiny, uh, what what direct, specific advice would you give Larry on how he can start sweating to the oldies today? What what can he do today to take off the change to get down to eight hundred pounds? Well, the hospital is not going to do much for him. They're well, going to keep him there a short time. Eight hundred would be the first goal that I would say. Right, right. If, if, but I'm not his doctor. If it the was hospital a... is going to keep him there for a short time. There won't be much they can do for him. Mm -hmm. They'll keep him there for a short time. Keep him on a, on a small diet and some medications if he needs it. But after that, I wound up in the re, uh, in the nursing home, and I stayed there a year. Wow! So I had you, to stay you, there a year, and with the help of the nursing home and the staff there, and the, and a strict diet and exercise, uh, that's how I got back in, into shape. So, would you recommend to, to Larry Tiny that he go to a nursing home? He'd have to go to a nursing home for about a year, and, and get himself it together and stri strictly diet and exercise that they allow, keep you there. Other than that, if he goes back home. It's not going to do him any good. How do you feel about that, Larry? Well, with me, like I said, there's, a two, there's, there's just two different things. Because, um, I was going to, uh, uh, it's like when you were younger, and I'd be much bigger than. Listen, Larry. You got to control it. You got to have a balance. Yeah. You got to have a balance. Yeah, you got to have a balance. Has anybody, what have your doctors told you, Larry? What have your doctors told you to do? Well, basically, what well, they told me three years ago, you know, if I had a test then, I would have been before Tiny, I'd probably be given Tiny advice. You'd be given Tiny advice. Right. So, Larry, are you, are you confident you can lose the weight? Let me... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Larry. Yeah, I put it on, it's in this book Larry, this. Larry, let me tell you something. It is now uh, June 11th, 2004. I'm making this challenge that uh, one year from now, it'd be June 11th, 2005. In one year... Tiny, how much weight can a guy lose in one year's time? In one year, if he's dedicated, I lost uh, I lost close to 400 pounds. Wow! So you can literally lose he can lose half his body weight. He can lose half his body weight. Let he me ask be, you. He has to be committed to it. There's no cheating on that. Larry? Yeah. How would you feel if we were to willy, if we would be willing to uh, say, in one year, we'll pay you ten dollars for every pound you lose. Ten dollars. Ten dollars for every pound. So if I he, think you're a businessman. So if he lost, if but he, I'm a, I was even a businessman. If he lost one, that's not ten hundred. <laughs> and I guarantee you, I'll be ten quarter within half that time. I I didn't, I didn't get I, that. Did you say you could that. do that in half the time? Let me tell you something. That's a yes, I think. Okay. When I was younger, I said that. Like I said. Right. Oh. Um, I've been much bigger now. And that's I didn't dance. I have to keep my body right. the balance. Right. So that would be. Are you saying you think. Are you going to give it a try, Larry, to lose the weight? Because that's. I'm going to so I'm ready to die. Okay, so you, you, you have no choice. You're going to lose the weight. And Don yeah. said he'll pay you $10 for every pound you lose. And if you lose 400 yeah. pounds, that's how much? $4,000. $4,000. $4,000. Cool. Now, but listen, here's the deal. If you gain weight, you have to pay me ten dollars a pound. <laughs> <laughs> you are on, partner. You're on. You're on. You're on. You're on. He's going to do it. That's great. Right. And if he loses five hundred pounds, that's five thousand dollars. And the same, but it's it's got to be. That's right. Within a year. Within a year from now. And Larry, we're going to check up, check in, and check up on you. And we'll let you know how much money you've made uh, uh -huh. based on our I ain't show. Moving nowhere. You're not going anywhere. All right. We want you to dance again. And as a matter of fact, Tiny, do you like that? Do you think that'll motivate Larry a little bit? It'll motivate him, but then I got, it's, it's strictly up to him to do it. Right. Uh, Tiny, let's and see he that. can't have no friends encourage him no other uh, no other way but to keep on to his diet. If anybody else thinks he's a friend and brings him food to eat when he doesn't need it, yeah, well, I'm not gonna I, help him any. I got a test for him right now. Here's a test right now. Hey, Larry, I'm reach out to somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Watch this. Watch this. Show we love. Watch this I'm test. Show love. Hey, Larry, yeah. just for being on our show today, we're going to give you a 7-Eleven Big Bite, 
and a 7-Eleven Super Big Gulp prize pack, including a $25 7-Eleven convenience star uh, card. Stop by 7-Eleven for a big bite all beef quarter pounder hot dog from Oscar Mayer and Coca-Cola. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. But remember, when you get that prize, Larry, this is the guy that's going to pay you $10 well, for every pound you lose. This is the test. That's the test. He's never scared. He's never scared. Do you, do you want us to send you the prize? Yeah. <laughs> See, now that, Larry, no. you just failed the test. Well, do you think, you're, are you going to give it to somebody else, Larry? Well, listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, uh, well, listen. Uh, Larry, he turned down. <laughs> what? He'll only eat one of them. <laughs> what, Larry? <laughs> he'll, only, he'll only eat one of them. He'll only eat one of them. It's a new diet. <laughs> Larry, it was a test, Larry. You're supposed to say no. Yes, thank you, give it back. Thank you, Tiny. You're supposed to say no. Thank there you. There you go. You just failed the test, Larry. I wouldn't want that to. That means if, 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 if they couldn't do it over the phone, what can your friends do for you? Tiny, you just... <laughs> what can my friends do? Your friends come my, over my and bring you a big boy, a big snack, or whatever? I don't know. That's what my friends supposed to do. Get me there. No, oh, no. Your friends ain't supposed to do that. If you've got friends, it's like that. It's like not having anybody if they bring you food. Uh, but see, the day my friends, friends are going to be there regardless. They understand. They, they support you. And they I had lots of you. friends, and they offered me stuff over the phone, and I told them, no, I don't need it. Well, that's good. See, Tiny, yeah. it's not about your friends, it's about what you want. All right, Tiny, let's try this again, though. Tiny, congratulations for being on the Don and Mike show. Right. You've won three hundred dollars worth of ice cream sundays from Baskin Robbins. Do you want it? No, sir. You can keep them. No, no, not on, not not Tiny. Larry. Oh, Larry. Larry, Larry, do you want three hundred dollars worth of ice cream sundays from Baskin Robbins? Yeah, I got a wife too. I got a wife and a son. Yeah, he's got a wife and a son, but <laughs> but not but not for you, right, Larry? Nah, but my wife's fine. Right. Okay, all right. All right, well, then we'll send you the ice cream, and we'll send you the 7-Eleven stuff, but it's got to be just for your wife and son. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Larry. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, now, now, Larry, you have my word as America's favorite broadcaster that if you lose, well, I don't care how much you lose in a year. Whatever you lose in a year, Don's going to pay you $10 per pound, okay? Okay. All right, sir. All right. Hey, well, you guys, when I when I was losing all that weight, <laughs> see, <laughs> see, Tiny knows that's a good offer. Right? It won't exceed eight thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because that's right. right. Because that's it, what about me, then. Pardon me. I'm a kid's speak. I never lose. I'm I'm a good at mine. What did he say? What did he say? I don't know. I said, oh, I should never get go against me gambling. Uh, never never well, you think about every, every time. Every time you get up in the morning, you think about you're ever you're getting paid. Somebody in America is paying you ten dollars for every pound you lose. Okay, Larry. Now listen, <laughs> I'm going to be on your ass. Pardon the, <laughs> pardon, pardon the pun, Larry. That's because, a big one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know a it's job. a big one, Larry. But listen, that's we, a big ass to be on, guys. I want to tell you something. <laughs> My leg, my leg. Here's the thing, Larry. We used to have a guy on our show named Hambone. He had to be... Geraldo had to lift him out of his house in a crane. Right, and a Hambone regretfully has he is, left us. He's no longer with us. Yeah. Larry, we don't want you to be the next Hambone. No. We want you to be, uh, you know, just like Tiny, to lose that weight and to keep losing the weight, okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. So what are you going to have for dinner tonight, Larry? Well, I don't know. We don't have food. Yeah, they, they give you what they want to give you. The they give you what the hospital's That's controlling. Right. right. But it's all good. Those are all lost. And, Tiny, I think you ought to check up on Larry occasionally, too. Keep him motivated. Oh, no problem. I'll check up on him. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. Larry, I tell you. Oh, yeah, anytime. Anytime, Tiny. That's good. Right. That's good. See what a, a friendship is made here. Mary and Tiny, and, and Tiny, I tell you what, I'll give you, I, I'll give you a penny for every uh, pound you lose. A penny, huh? A, a penny for every. Well, come on, you're already down to three seventy-five. I'm not Donald Trump. Here. I'm going for uh, the twenty-third. I'm going for surgery again. What are you mean, that Donald Trump? Oh, I ain't paying. I, listen, oh, and I, uh, and uh, incidentally, Larry, are you going to lose all this weight with surgery? Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm natural. Okay. Natural. natural. Yeah, I ain't, uh, natural I ain't with, all, with the excess weight of like I don't think you can get it all off. Well, I ain't uh, going to pay for somebody to go have a Cardi Wilson surgery. Well, you know, we'll see. I don't think Larry's at that stage yet. Yeah, he can make a big difference. Larry's going to have to take some of it off himself. Sure. Sure. If it doesn't matter, however he gets it off, you're going to pay him $10 a pound, right? Yeah. Yes. Out of your personal account. That's correct. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Playing with well, the house well, money, Mike. There you go. Well, <laughs>
You know. It's about rankings. It's about rankings. It's about. Yes, I'm picking this line, but he lied to me. <laughs> no, he's not lying. No, nope. no, he no could, Larry. Uh, Larry, he couldn't say it on the radio. If Larry, he was lying. I swear to God, one year from now, as a matter of fact, if. If you lose the weight with before a year, if you lose 400 pounds, I'll give you a check on the spot. Okay. You, you lose 400 pounds tonight, I'll give you the check tomorrow. There you go. All right. Okay? This is so, when a fireman carry me out, that's what it was called. By the time they carry him out, no. 400 pounds. When they carry me outside that door. Mm -hmm. Oh, when they carry me yeah, I understand. Honestly, That's when you made the decision. <laughs> when they carried you outside. Okay, good luck, Sarah. You need to turn it around. Okay, tell him. Well, thanks to our 1,200 pounds of guests, it was uh, 800 pounds with Larry. Oh, the, actually, a little less than 1,200. Right. 800 with Larry, 375 with Tiny, who's already a big winner because he's a big loser. Right. Uh, and I, I mean that he's lost all the way. Oh, amen. And Larry now will be the guy that we follow for the next year. Very good. To see if, in fact, he can do it. That's a lot of weight, baby. That's a lot of weight, baby. That's a lot of weight, baby. Right. You know, and as long as now we're on the topic of losing weight and everybody's motivated, if we could just go back for a second. Uh, Larry, if there would be one food that you could have right now, what would you die to eat? Food? Yeah. yeah. If you could have anything you want right now, what would you have? Uh, well, there's only going to be one thing. One yeah. thing. One thing. Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> chicken. Chicken. And uh and tiny? Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If I could have it, filet mignon. Filet ah, mignon. Filet mignon. Yeah. Oh. All right, very now good. Listen, uh, both of you guys, let me ask you two. Larry, are you planning on going to the Atkins or the South Beach? Well, I would order Atkins and the South Beach need to so. Me. That's what I thought. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and how about you, Tiny? Which do you like better, Atkins or South Beach? Uh, I never tried either one of them. Ah. You yeah, just, there you go. You just cut down the calories, right, Tiny? I cut down the calories, a lot of exercise and hard work. That's how you got to do yeah. I kept okay. the, uh, my, the amount of calories that they started me at the hospital with. All right, well, listen, uh, Larry Tiny here is going to be your personal coach, but I'll be your sugar daddy on this. You know, and, and it's a sugar... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll be, whoa, whoa. I'll be, your, I'll be your sugar free daddy. Yeah. <laughs> your equal daddy. That's cancerous, man. man. <laughs> Whatever. We'll what? what? throw a little bit of splendor in there. There you go. Oh, he said sugar free is cancerous. Right. <laughs> I think, yeah, yes. Yeah. Cancer's, yeah. Way, cancer's yeah. way down on the list, dude. Don't worry about it. Uh, Larry? <laughs> Can you sing us a song? Can you sing us a song to get us to break? That is pure spiewag. Can you sing us a song to get us to break, Larry? Larry, do you have a favorite song you could sing? Yeah. All right, here he is, everybody. Uh, the brand new Don and Mike show, Angel, Larry Cooper from New York City. Larry. Ready? Ready. Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Sing something for us. Doing a boombox. Yeah, yeah, Larry. Can I tell you something? You, Bravo, you probably Larry. you probably burned three or four calories right there. Absolutely, the pounds are starting to fall off. Uh, uh, All right, uh, Larry. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Hold on, our producer Beth Ann will get in touch with you. And Tiny, thank you so much. Okay, what state are we coming from? We are coming from the state of unbelief. <laughs> the, state of the, the state of non-belief. The yeah. state of denial. Now the show originates in Washington D.C. Tiny. Okay. Uh, Tiny, hold on, and Beth Ann will talk to you as well. Sure, thank you. Good luck, right. man. Have, have, a, have a good weekend, and Larry, lose lose the weight. Yeah. Okay. Lose the weight. <laughs> okay. Try that slim fast. <laughs> thank you. Hold on, guys. All right. Hold, hold on a second. Okay. That's our intervention. Wow. Um, we've done some good here. Wow. Today. I mean, well, we'll we've, had, we've interviewed... <laughs> Heavier guys that didn't sound as heavy as Larry. Yeah. I want to say that we've never. I think Larry might have been reclining. Mm -hmm. We've never. I don't want to say we've never had a successful one of these uh, fat guys on the show. Have we? Because though? well, no. Rob, who's the guy that we called a couple of years ago when we Rob were doing okay. middays? Yeah, he's uh, he's still not quite reached his goal for the surgery. He's still about twenty five pounds shy. Remember, oh, there was a guy close. that had to lose like he, he, I think he was in Michigan. He had to lose three or four hundred pounds in, in order to be eligible for the right. Carney Wilson surgery. Wow. <laughs> what are you rubbing your belly? Does it feel like? <laughs> and of course we lost 
we lost Hambone. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, a lot of people lost Hambone. And it was hard to call him because he'd lose the phone. That's right. It would yes. be under and his, the phone would ring and it'd be under his fat. Under his butt. I'm yeah. hungry. Uh, at least on more than one occasion. Yeah, and that's before the uh, technology existed to put a phone on vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Larry Cooper. It and, will uh, fascinate you. He's a dancer. He's he's our guy. Yeah. He's our guy. And I hope really that when Larry loses the weight, that we can understand him a little easier. You know. Yeah, I think so. Because it kind of it sounded. I, I believe the word would be strangulated a little bit. Did he mention where he got shot? In the leg, like. not the throat, huh? In the no. leg, no, no, not in the throat, no. in the leg. And, uh, that's and I think Tiny's little... a good personal coach for Larry. Excellent. Well, follow his progress and see how he does. Yeah, and just I hope Tiny doesn't ever relapse. <laughs> no nuts or new guns. <laughs> there you go. You had to talk about Baskin Robbins. Sometimes that's all it takes. I know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hello, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hey, uh, I want to know if uh, Don and Mike. I'm six two. I weigh 150 pounds. I want to know if they'll pay me ten dollars for every pound I gain during a year. Hey, it's uh, it's us, and we've already did that. We, we've already we've already did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we've already done that contest long time ago. We did them. Uh, who's who could be our fattest? Uh, gain the most weight, the shortest amount of time. Absolutely. I already done it, my friend. Listen, to get on this show now, health wise, you have to be taken out of your apartment by firemen using net. Amen. And when we had that contest for us, who could gain the most weight? We uh, we had to cancel the contest. How, how about Because what? employees were not eligible. <laughs> <laughs> how about five bucks a pound? No. How about, let me think about this. Yes. There. Hi, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hi, I was, uh, I wanted to say Larry sounds like a really overweight Dennis Murphy. An overweight Dennis Murphy. Well, now, now yeah. there, there's an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't Dennis already overweight? Dennis uh, continues to gain. Just finish, Hello, yeah. Don and Mike hey. show. Hey, uh, is that guy you're going to pay the $10 per pound? Yes. Is that net or gross? Uh, I think, <laughs> yes. At this, gross. at this stage of the game, it would gross. be gross. It would be very gross. Absolutely, yes. it's gross. Okay. <laughs> net or gross. That's funny. That's, it. That's good. And net is what they had to bring him down in. Right. Yeah, net or gross. Net or gross. Um, Five floors. One more, one more call. Where's the girl? Oh, we lost the girl. We had some girl that was hot for Larry. Really? Wow. You just hung up. No, Chubby Chaser. Was it John Kim? <laughs> Man, it was not. <laughs> don't break the seal. So follow, uh, follow the progress of Larry. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, tease this like, you know, as always, when we get one of these guys, it could be a life or death thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope he's successful. Could he sounds motivated. Death. He said, "What I got, the one thing I got out of there is when they took me out of the house in the net." Mm -hmm. That's when I got. That's, that's when, when I know. already lost yeah. the weight. That's when you know. So for those of you out there who are fat like we are, go ahead and splurge this weekend. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to eat an entire pie. I figure I'm at least a couple of weekends away from them having to take me out of my house in a net. I'm going to eat a uh, an entire pie. A L M. What time should we wake What's you? A O M. A la mode. <laughs> what time should we wake you for the pie? Uh, wait, feed me a cherry pie <laughs> as soon as I awaken. <laughs> Hello, last call, Don and Mike. Here's Dennis in Wisconsin. Dennis. Hey, what do you think the chances are that that guy uh, has any resemblance to the fat guy in the Monty Python movie and you slip him a mint and he blows up? Mr. Creosote, one of the great fat characters of all time. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest. Uh, that I would think that that movie Maybe. would be motivating for Larry. Yeah. You would think. I could picture him while you were talking to that guy. I was right. waiting for somebody to bring him a bucket. Just Thank one you. tiny waffle thin mint. One more call. <laughs> Hello. Just want to let you know, I am losing weight. Right. Yeah. I lost five pounds so far. Yeah, five pounds. <laughs> I, I Would you change your underpants? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> what I'm doing is uh, I'm cutting calories. What did, you have, what did yeah. you have for breakfast this morning? The only thing I had today was Kellogg's cereal bars. And what did you have for lunch? A uh, 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 20 ounce guy Coke. You know, Dennis? That's all, Dennis? Yeah. Oh. When you lose weight, you can't count tooth loss. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> what, 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 hey, there you go. Way to go, Dennis. <laughs> what, but you know it was worth it. What Wait kind of exercises are you doing, Dennis? Oh, uh, I'm walking a mile. Oh, okay. Very I'm good. Walking a mile. <laughs> so hopefully good by luck. hopefully by the end of summer, I should. Pounds. 30 pounds. What is your weight right now, Dennis? Dennis weighs 387 oh, pounds now. 2, 5, 2. 5. 252. 252. 52 and a half, and your, your goal weight is to be about 220? 220 by August. If I get lower, I'll be happy. Yeah. How tall are you, Dennis? Um, I'm a short guy, five cousins. 
Five seven. Five seven. Yeah. Five seven. Right. Have you have you thought about our offer to get you to pull your teeth and, and let us put new uh, I, Da Vinci I veneers want to, in? Uh, Don, please, yeah. if you can find a dentist, I will pick you up on your offer. All right, Dennis, we want to do we that. We got it. We got it. Have we ever get? Did he ever get back to us? He never called us back. So I think we can throw it open to the public if there is a dentist out there who is engin- interested in engineering this fiasco. Mm-hmm. Dennis has, and I am not exaggerating, something that is very uh, similar to dog teeth. If you've ever seen a picture of Dennis's, uh, what is this? It's from Joe. Oh, oh, here's a joke from Joe. Is Dennis still on the phone? No, he's hung up. But Joe writes in, <laughs> Dear Dennis, lose your other hand and lose ten more pounds. That's a joke from Joe. Thanks, Joe. Joe. Joe's just running in with jokes now. He's you know? writing. He's doing our comedy right. Because we, right. we, we sent him down the other day to Reagan's funeral. Now yeah. Joe's writing jokes for us. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank um, got a break. <laughs> Who's on the Celebrity Hotline? We'll find out when we come back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Two members of the Seattle Star Wars Society are giving new meaning to the term die-hard fan. They kicked off the new year by getting in line for Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, four and a half months before the May 16th release of the film. John Guth and Jeff Twyton, I think it is, are outside Cinerama in Seattle, Washington, waiting. John and Jeff, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. I- I'm trying to hi, do... John and Mike. Oh, we get to say hi, Mom, and everything like that. Jeff and John, we appreciate it. Good luck to you, and maybe we'll check in with you as the 129 days tick off. Please. Yep. Thanks. See you, Don and Mike. Okay. Dude. The Don and Mike Show. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Don, Mike, both of you, idiots. They bring you very best wishes. And may happy and happy Hawks be with you forever. Right. Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. It's uh, Brad from Wisconsin. Uh, Brad, Don and Mike show. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, guys, what's going on with the move? The office switch. Down well, with the- it's a good question. Yeah. The office switch will be happening. Um, we are switching offices with sales manager uh, Jeff, Hedge. uh, Jeff Hedges. Ah. Uh, there are oh, ma- what, happened to- what happened to the girl? Uh, Julie Fullman. You know, you know what? I'm glad you called. We don't have time for it today, right? It's an incre- it, It's almost like one of Buzz's wife swapping parties <laughs> because what's happened now is that the girl, Julie, the sales manager, ha- has an office that she wants that Paul Gorgi, the sales guy that lives in the tanning booth, wants. Right? Tony, the engineer, thinks that he can move Jeff upstairs into an office that is currently being used as a storage space. Right. So we would get Jeff Hedges' office, which means that Julie Fullman, the sales lady, has to negotiate for an office upstairs Okay. with Paul Gorgi, the sales guy that lives in the tanning booth. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't Julie uh, pull rank over Paul Gorgi? Yes, she does. Not how it works, though. They, they did it my way. They put all the keys in a bowl. <laughs> anyway, yeah. We are... Uh, the, the office move is happening. That's called Friday Night at the Burbank. <laughs> but I'll tell you the main reason we've not talked about it is that they brought Alan into it. Oh, and, no! And since they brought Alan into it, <laughs> everybody's having to stop and, and oh, make, God, check, no. and no. double check oh, and triple dear. check. Is this why Buzz can't keep a wife? Is this why yes. Buzz can't keep a wife? A, it, this just sounds like one of, you know, a whole explosive mess. Well, it is kind of an explosive mess. I have no idea until this very yeah. moment that Alan had been brought into it. Right. You spared that. You spared me from that. Didn't Everybody you? had been trying to hide this from Alan. And, you know, and, and a good job of hiding because we've only talked about it on the radio for two weeks. <laughs> he had, and we had even called him and told him that he thought it was a joke. And if it's Alan, if he's involved, add one month. Well, no, I insert wonder. Alan. Add one, yeah, one month. I think it's because he yellow lighted it. I think it's going to be happening soon. But we'll, listen, on Monday's episode, we'll get all the players in here because there's a lot of people at this radio station involved with the office swap. Very good. Okay. Oh, well, great. Thank you for caring, Brad. Hey, you're welcome, and keep it up. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Uh, okay, celebrity hotline coming right up oh. here. Um, I did. Uh, boy, I don't have time to tell you everything, but I, I just want to let you know that Ben Affleck has a uh, hairy stomach. Uh, apparently he's got a new girlfriend. Like I don't know that a, a new girlfriend, a, a Latina, a Latino girlfriend named Enza Zambatro. Mm-hmm. Oh, bueno! And she has uh, roommates, and uh, she says, uh, "quote He's hairy stomach was left all over my couch." 
Uh, me, Ben had taken his shirt off at this other girl's apartment. Oh, he didn't like shed or anything, did he? Yes, he did. No. Uh, he also has gross back hair. The second girl is equally disgusted. She says Ben is tall, not very attractive. He has white and straight teeth. It's clear he thinks he's the bomb. However, he sheds like an animal. Ah, that is gross. Ben Affleck. Um, I don't know. Rob, oh, did you shed your back hair when you? Did you shed your body hair? Apart? No, no. I because I shed my body hair. Really? I mean, I do. I, I shed occasionally. I'll, I'll notice that. Yeah. But not. But not like Ben Affleck. I mean, if you has your girlfriend. Hey, has Carla ever said to you <laughs> that, the whole, that I that I leave uh, the hair that, on the um, that your your hairy stomach was left all over her couch? No, 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 no. She hasn't. But I've been, I've been aware. Is it primarily in the spring? I well, if, if this is spring, I you know because I mean these are gray now, right. and and I notice I notice them occasionally, like on towels and things like uh, that. I don't lose any hair from my head, and I don't lose any hair from uh, you know the the hair down there. But I notice uh, the the chest hair it, it, it tends to end up in different. I spots. thought you shaved down there. Shaved down there? Oh, that was another show. <laughs> Hold on, um, <laughs> for me, I don't shed any body hair, but I can't keep a hair on my head. That was another show, but nothing's changed. <laughs> um, <laughs> David Letterman. I'm a smooth has, operator. <laughs> David Letterman has had this thing for Paris Hilton. Uh, back when the videotape came out of her having sex on the internet, right? He had. I guess they had her booked as a guest on the show, right? And then she backed out at the last minute, mm -hmm. and, he, and he would spend like I don't know the first ten minutes of his show every day talking. And this was months ago. Yeah, this was like last fall when the video was. Well, out. finally, I think that, that she's his type. Bulletin: She's going to be on his show. Okay, Monday, Paris Hilton will make her debut on David Letterman. Well, so I, 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 I never watched Leno, but I watched it last night, and Nicole Richie was on uh, with uh, with Leno. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, I, I can't stand Nicole Richie. I would take, I think Nicole Richie is the total wannabe, you know, just... If we know. were playing that old game, though... I, I oh, would, not an... Oh, no. i take Nicole over Paris any oh, day of the week. Me. Not me. No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You bet. Really? You bet. Paris thinks she's smart. Nicole, I don't, you know, I'm not Nicole talking, let's, knows let's, she's dumb. Look, we're taking, they're taking the mind out of it right now, aren't we? I, I, Are you I, talking about a lifetime of companionship no, or, talking, or just a brief uh, I'm talking encounter? About, I'm talking about 20 minutes and then get out of the room. I will say that Paris uh, Hilton, after watching The Simple Life reruns, mm -hmm. to just kind of look at it, to see it, and I hated it. it Paris Hilton is definitely too skinny. Okay. Yes. Hold on. We got our celebrity we have to call, but I, di I didn't want to leave you without a Friday feel-good. Oh, feel so watch Paris oh. Hilton Monday. We'll talk about her Monday. Very good. Very good. Uh, here's your feel-good story. Before we do our celebrity uh, hotline, something to make you feel good. And from the heartland, okay, headline, Omaha, Nebraska. A TV cameraman filming a story about a dangerous intersection was struck and killed by a vehicle. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Jeff Frolio, 45, died last night. He was uh, working for a station, KETV, covering a story for that evening's newscast. About a very dangerous intersection. Oh, boy. Where people speed and run through red lights. Wow. Um, the driver who hit the man right. was not drinking or speeding. The speed limit on the highway is 60. The guy, the reporter, the guy from the TV station, the cameraman that was there doing the story about the dangerous intersection, right. simply didn't look. Oh, boy. Simply, oh, dear. He simply did not look. She was sober. She was not breaking the speed limit. She only saw the guy in her rear view mirror. Mm. Um, and the guy... path of a vehicle. It is not a traffic engineering problem. Well, so. Yeah. And he's got a bit of a point. Anyway, it's a it's a Friday feel good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing. See, the TV guys out there saying, yeah. you know, this is a dangerous intersection. Yeah. I'm Brad Bommy, Channel 5. Then he turns and boom, he's... Uh, Proved his point. He's hit by a car. Or maybe not. <laughs> um, oh, Listen, it's Survivor time. Way down upon the Herbert River, That's far, right. far away. Here well, we go. I've got sand in every 
Nook and cranny pants are wet all day. Thank you, Mad Dog. Wow. Yuck. Um, yuck, right. Time for the uh, celebrity hotline. Uh -huh. And today we're going to be calling. Yes. Actually, he would have been more of a celebrity a month ago. Yeah, well, we'll take him now. Uh, Lex from Survivor. Hey. And uh, we're taking Lex uh, for a couple of reasons. First, he's interesting. He got screwed over by Boston Rob, and he is the Survivor All-Star. Mm -hmm. And also, Michael Hughes, a vice president of this company, promised us he could get Rupert from Survivor on. Oh, and right. Rupert from Survivor's never uh, called once. So we'll just call Lex. Tell him how much we like him. Mm -hmm. I like Lex. And then I think we'll try to call Vice President Michael Hughes to let him know the joy of actually speaking to someone on Survivor. Who's on Survivor All-Stars. Sure. Since he promised he could deliver up Rupert. Amen. Hello? Hello, Lex. Yeah? Lex, this is Don and Mike. Sorry we're late calling you. Thank Let's you for joining us. a round of applause. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, are we actually on? Yeah, we're, we're, on, the we're on live, Lex. Oh, right on, huh? How going, you, everybody? How you doing, Lex? We uh, uh, couldn't be better. I'm in Santa Cruz. It's sunny. I'm loving life. It's all good. All right. We uh, uh, we loved you on the show on Survivor. Can't believe how you got screwed over by Boston Rob. Now, are you f still friends with Boston Rob in real life now that the show is done and over? <laughs> no. You can't. You can't. <laughs> no. What, what, I mean, before I even answer that question, I, I think I, I have to say it's funny to me why how people care so much about whether or not we're friends anymore, now that the show is over, you know, the game is over, right. everything's done, and, and that's and that's funny, because university, that's the first question I get asked now when I walk around, well, are on. you and Rob still friends? Hold and on. Lex, let me just explain to you one thing. As I watched the show, I would see, like, b before he stabbed you in the back, now I know they edit the show different ways, but they yep. made it seem like you had said, "Hey, you guys seem to be compadre." I've got a, I got a buddy. No matter what happens on this show, I know I've got a friend. Meanwhile, he's off talking to his dumb girlfriend, Amber. You know, right. planning to stab you in the back. Right. So, so I'll tell you guys. The short of it is, no, we're not, we're not friends anymore. Good. But, um, Good. You know, I have to say that I, uh, you know, and and this, you know, for better or for worse. The fact of it is, as far as I'm concerned, I have no hard feelings at all against them. Everybody feels a certain comfort. They have their the line that they will or will not cross when they play Survivor. They make a decision either before they play the game or while they're out there. You know, this is how far, this is what I would do, you know, for a million bucks. And he felt comfortable, you know, taking, exploiting a friendship and, and basically doing whatever it took to get to the money. And that's totally fine. I don't judge him for that. I wasn't comfortable doing that. Um, for me, the friendship was more important, but you can't fault him for that. He, you know, he came, he got a lot closer to the million dollars because he was willing to do whatever it took. That's all good and fine, but the fact of the matter is, out there, he kind of proved what kind of a friend he was, and we got in a pinch situation, the ultimate test. I know what kind of a friend he is, so. For a guy who said, you know, he didn't want to talk about it. He sure doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't he? He'd yeah. have a crappy friend. Got some issues. Yeah. Hey, Lex, I want to ask you a very specific question about the, uh, the final show. Yeah. When, when Jerry walked off, I mean, that was kind of, uh, rushed, and it was explained by, by the host, by Jeff, uh, when yeah. we came back from commercial break, but obviously you were sitting there, and I, 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 one of the frustrations I had, boy, I wish they either had tape rolling on that, or we could have seen what would happen when she walked off. Can you, uh, are you allowed to talk about that? Can you tell us what went down when yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, no one told me, I, no one's told me I can't okay, talk what, what about exactly, it. Okay, what exactly, Jerry was obviously, uh, she was obviously pissed off when that happened. She's getting booed. What, what happened during the commercial break that we didn't see. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, and, and it wasn't so much that she was pissed off. It was, imagine yourself, put yourself in, in Madison Square Garden. You've got, mm -hmm. I think, between five and 10,000 people in the audience, and everyone starts booing you mm -hmm. when you're making, you're, you're basically trying to clear the air and, and say something, get something off your chest that you've been trying to tell people for quite a while. And nobody, I don't think anybody would have a very easy time with thousands of people booing you. The thing with Jerry, she... Was, well, we have no problem with it. <laughs> he should be on this call. Take some freaking phone calls but on the this thing show The thing is, when people are booing you from home, you can't hear them through the radio. Right. Uh -huh. but, I mean, no, but my point is, Jerry, Jerry is a... First of all, Jerry's a great... She's a great girl. She's a super cool chick. She has gotten a bum rep... Ever since she did Australia, she was portrayed as, you know, the ultimate bitch on the show. And it, she has basically had to do, you know, PR for herself and, and character rebuilding for three, four years now because everybody thinks that she's this horrid person. I'll tell you right, right off the bat, she's a great girl and she doesn't deserve that. Now, the point she was trying to make 
was one that a lot of us, I think, have tried to make in the past, and that is, you know, we, we are these characters on this show that people right. sitting at home love to watch and, and yell at or criticize or whatever, but when you get right down to it, we're also, we're not, we're not just these kind of TV characters. Now, let me, let me hold characters. it. Let me stop. Let me stop you right there, though. And I think that I can relate to the way people in that audience might have felt. At that very moment, I was saying to myself, hey, you know, this is what you signed on for. I mean, well, this, and especially when you're going to an all-star show, that comes with, and you guys know more than anybody, that comes with the territory. Absolutely. And I signed on the dotted line. I, you know, I could frankly give a rat's ass <laughs> how they edit me or what anyone thinks of me. You know, outside of my circle of friends and family, because they're the only yeah. ones whose opinion really matters. But I have a really thick skin, and not everybody that does the show that signed on that dotted line has as thick a skin as me. But the truth remains, there are certain you should still just because we signed on the dotted line and we agreed to play this game and, and be on the show doesn't give everybody in the world the right to be rude to us. Oh, but d dude, hold on a second. I mean. Kind of, yeah. It, and CBS. And also, also I mean, wh wh where do you where do you get off saying that it gives the right of anybody to come up to me, for example, you know, when I'm with my with my family, with my kids, and come up to me and say, you know what, I hated you, you're a jerk, mm. um, but can I have your autograph? You know, that's yeah. they treat people feel comfortable treating us because we're on a reality TV show yes. any way they want, and they treat us sometimes in ways that they wouldn't treat a total stranger. I think or really, Lex, I really would say to that that, that anybody at all. In any area of celebrity, when you go into that celebrity status, that that you know, it really does. You, you get the good with the bad. How you Absolutely. handle it, you're, you're not obligated to sit there and take it from somebody. But you know what? And and I don't think anybody you right. know has and to you, take and, it. And you know what? Jerry didn't sit there and take it. She decided. You know what? This ain't worth it. What she I'm did? Did she, uh, did, she uh, did she flip the crowd off or anything like that? Nothing like that. In fact, again, you you guys are buying into the hype of of who her character yes, we is, are. thanks to the editing on the show. Right. right. She uh -huh. she was actually not mad. She was heartbroken that there was so much kind of hate directed at her for really no substantial reason. She broke down and she had to bail because she didn't want to come back after commercial break and have cameras all trained on her and close up on her while she was crying because oh. you know I mean at, at the at the we would have loved that leave with some dignity. But no, but here's the thing though. Understand, Lex, we're big fans of the show. We're big fans of yours. But dignity, you check that at the door on that show. I mean. Frankly, I would. I, I would don't agree. I mean, I think I kept my dignity, dignity the whole time. You, no, you are. No, you far, did. You did absolutely. You did, and, I, and I will never. I will never back down, sell out, or compromise no, dude, for listen, anybody. Dude, listen, that's great. And when you and, and I agree with you. When they stabbed you in the back, you just sat there and said, "Okay, you know that. You, that's how you're playing the game." Did they but try? If, did they try to get Jerry to stay on the set when that happened? But if she can't handle it, we as Americans, you know, the schmucks that watch the show, we want to see that. Because everybody out there in the land, uh, you know, is is you know dealing with their own pathetic situations, and then we want to live vicarious. I mean, that's right. the whole. Don't you think that's the whole reality phenomenon? I mean, that's that's what it is. I oh, mean, it is. I mean, it's 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 a it's 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 a um a, a media a TV medium that that really delivers and panders to the voyeur in all of us. Yeah, and now Lex, how have you taken your popularity from the show? Because you're a popular guy, a lot of people were rooting for Right, you. absolutely. How have you taken that? Have, have you worked that into anything or are you walking away from it now? Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not really I never went into the thing, into the experience with the intention of, you know, um, using it as a springboard or parlaying it into anything else really. I, I mean, I originally signed up for Survivor for the Adventure and I and I had I got to have it twice. Um, the thing, the most significant way that I've that I've kind of exploited the experience is I'm using it for as much good as I can. I'm doing a ton of charity work. I have about 30 or 40 charity events already booked this summer. I'm actually leaving tomorrow morning and doing three different charity events in Los Angeles just this weekend alone. Um, that to me has been has been the greatest thing that I've been able to take take away from this experience is that I can go out. People for some reason now they they seem to care what I have to say, so I'm going to go out and and try to help as many you know nonprofits and charities that that I back and I believe in as possible. Well, um, you know, I, I'd like to, if possible, I would love to play this game with Lex. If you if you wouldn't mind, what game? It. I'd like to go through and get a one word description, uh, just a one word on each. Of your fellow Survivor All Stars, <laughs> could, that, you, could you remember the I, I, the ones that I would uh, you know I mean I, obviously I, I just like Boston Rob Boston Rob one word uh, Boston Rob uh, ruthless. Right, how about this Jeff Probst uh, 
Smart. Uh, Amber. Um, who? Mark Mark Burnett. Um, oh, uh, uncompromising. Rupert. Um, larger than life. The girl, the, the woman, not the girl, the woman with the Boy Scout uniform. Oh, you know, the boy, uh, the boy uh, with... Lil. Yeah. Never met her. Never met her. Wow. Really? Oh. Uh, what, what, big, big Tom? Yeah, Big, big Tom. Big Tom's my brother. <laughs> my brother. Hey, hey, what was up with the retarded Big Tom comment when uh, when when they brought back the people and he said, well, "I would have rather have been with with your sister of the, the woman next door." Did, was that edited out of context, or, or is he just nuts like that? Oh, I don't even remember. What, what was that? Uh... Oh, that was. I guess that was after you were off. When they, was when that they, a comment about about Sue Hawk or what? No, 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 no. They when after you were off, one of the prizes, all of the people got a relative to come visit them. Right. And I think it was Big Tom's brother who came. Son. Yeah, his, his son. His son. Oh, yeah. And he said something like. I wish it was the girl next door instead of you. Something like the daughter oh, of that's the, right. yeah, the daughter was... of the next door neighbor. <laughs> yes. And it's like no one on Survivor said, hey, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know right. what? With Big Tom, you get what you get. And, um, and that's what you got to love about him. It's, it's uncut, undiluted, and it's true, pure Virginia goat farmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Re uh, Lex, hold on. Here's another one. Here's a, a name association, Ray Romano. What do you want me to associate him with? Just first thing comes to your mind. First thing Dobbs of kids. Last time I, I met I met him and he had kids all over him because he's got like he he has a litter of kids himself. Wow. He's the best dad in the world. What about Leslie Moonves? Leslie <laughs> Moonves, power broker. Power broker. Yeah. What about his girlfriend Julie Chen? <laughs> Hot piece of ass. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more than one word, but that's okay. Yeah, well, it's, uh, run it all together, it'll still read the same way. Hot piece of ass. <laughs> what about Mr. Moonvez's ex-wife, who can no longer watch CBS because it makes her cry? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? But I, I have to say, probably wealthy. Wealthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, or will be. and for the record, Les, we, uh, for the, Lex, we got Les Moonvez's permission to uh, to talk about the tabloid story, so we're, we're able to do that. We're now. okay. And one last... Mel Karmazin. Who's that? <laughs> oh, no. I made it. Who? I know. He, he, was, used, he used to be the head of Viacom. Okay. Yes. He used to be you know, last. I, that's the kind of stuff. It, you're lucky you got anything out of me with Les Moonves. I, I, I don't even... I, I'm not even part of that whole world, really. Well, I, went, I went and played Survivor. You know, you do... You do and I would like to... One word. Sue Hawk. Ooh. <laughs> That's my word. Um, <laughs> Tough one. Wow. I'm not, uh, not going to touch that one. Wow. Let me just ask you. Of all of the women on the Survivor All-Stars, did any of the women have a problem with appreciable odor? Ooh. Sim um, simply yes or no, and if you say yes, we're going to think it's Sue. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, listen, Lex, we're going to let you go because uh, we... You, got, you, you guys got to let me plug one thing. Yep. Go, go right ahead. Sure. Sir. What do you want to plug, Lex? Well, one of the fun things I've gotten, I'm getting to do because of Survivor is I'm going to actually get to go out and take a cruise in the Caribbean. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going out. I'm t actually taking my wife on a cruise. And this is, this. my, my wife's been so patient with me with all of these adventures I get to take. But this is a cruise that um, myself... Big Tom, oh, Kathy oh. O'Brien, uh -huh. and Richard Hatch. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, it's a all four of us are going to be on this cruise in the Caribbean. It's from November 13th through the 20th, it's and it's a, a Survivor-themed cruise. All right. If anybody out there oh, wants to go on a cruise, I promise Richard will will have will be clothed. At the very least, we'll make him wear the big blur spot. You can't promise <laughs> in, that. In front of in front of little Richard. Right. Um, but if anybody's out there is interested in going from November 13th to the 20th on the cruise of the Caribbean, it's on a brand new ship. It's going to be amazing. Um, just call Regal Cruises and Travel, and the number is 1-800-461-7447. And it's like it's a whole week long, and it's I think the rates start at under 700 bucks, and that's like okay, a slow bucks down. A day. Slow down, young man. You My just, God, you that's just, a plug. Jesus Christ, that's a plug. We just <laughs> wanted to ask you about Survivor. You got a, a goddamn <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, nice talking to you, uh, uh, Lex. Lex, good luck in uh, your charity work and whatever you do. Thanks. Thank you all. You take care. Peace. Thanks, Lex. Bye-bye, Lex. Bye-bye.
There goes Lex. Wow. Get me my ticket. He's all right. He didn't want to talk much about his fight with Boston Rob. No. No, he okay. did not. No, he yeah. did, except he talked about it for three minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, the, and the Jerry thing, you know. And that was it. I like that because, you know what? It was a little uh, round table about the whole state of uh, reality he TV. Through. Will Mr. Lady be speaking on that group? <laughs> Wait, hey, how many times have we been offered, huh? Hold on. That's, that's the number one offer that we've turned Try to keep him years. covered on. Let me call Infinity Vice President Michael Hughes. Very good. Yeah, let's hear it from Michael Hughes. Uh -huh. He's the guy, remember, who said, I could get you, Rupert. Hughes. Michael Hughes, Don and Mike show. Hi, Michael. Hi, Don and Mike. Hey, I bet you're uh, probably busy getting ready for the, uh, uh, oh, the box has already left town, so you're probably not in your funeral mode. Let me tell you that we just had on the show from Survivor, Lex. And does that remind you of anything, Michael? Oh, boy. <laughs> Perhaps an ill-fated promise from months ago. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, okay, just wanted to remind you. Yeah, we just wanted to rub it in a little bit. That's all. I just keep thinking if I walk by your office really quickly and say hello, that perhaps over time you'll forget. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We're just kidding. And just for the record, can we have your name, please? Michael Hughes. <laughs> we finally got him. Okay. Have a great weekend, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Bye-bye. He's fun. It's the running gang that I just love. He's the vice president. Yeah. He's the vice president. Anybody's the vice president here. You said he's the vice president? That, ben the janitor's the vice president. Everybody's the vice president of something around here. And what was his name? Oh, Michael Hughes. <laughs> we, got, we got a break. <laughs> Thank you to Lex from Survivor. Yeah. We'll be back with the Friday Fish. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Thank you. I've been watching. Not only did I have the pleasure of being asked to open the telethon, but I've been watching in most of the night, except when I was on stage myself at the Sands. And it occurred to me, knowing the beating that this man takes every year, being here all these hours, in addition to the wonderful press uh, that, that he has to put up with throughout the year, I picked two songs that we dedicate to the man here. And most of the time we dedicate these songs to you. But I, I think you kind of fit in, too. We hope you agree. For you, my friend. The Don and Mike Show. They only hit you because they love you. Don and Mike. Ain't that the truth? Absolutely. Um, you know, everybody uh, is in town for the uh, Reagan funeral. Right. And incidentally, for those of you here in the D.C. area, on the Beltway, uh, the box is gone. Mm -hmm. The box is in the air, so things should be getting back to normal here. Um, buzz the list of celebrities today. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. Among others, Kirk Douglas, Charlton Heston, Tom Selleck, Bo Derek. Uh, we have Dolores Hope, uh, Frank Sinatra's widow Barbara, and Tina and Nancy Sinatra. Now, these were just the celebrities that were at the Washington part of this. The Hollywood names. There will be more celebrities at the uh, at the Los Angeles thing. Of course. The private thing at the library at Simi Valley. Joining us now somewhere, who, someone who I think we mentioned yesterday should have been there. And as it turns out, well, I guess, I guess he was there because he's here now. God knows we played his tapes all week. Thank you. Hey, Wayne. Hey. Thank you so much. Wayne um, Newton. It's, uh, it's great to be uh, back uh, at, uh, at the Don and Mike show. Um, I, I flew in from uh, Las Vegas, uh, where, I'm, where I'm appearing. At the sense, and um, I, I just can I can I say can I say this one thing to you? Yeah. To you, uh, yeah, Donald. Sure, uh, my friend. Uh, you, you just do such a fabulous job with uh, your your skeleton crew that you patch together in in such a such a fine fashion. You're you're such a humanitarian. Thank you, Faggot. I, I listen now. Now listen. What? The jokes stop now. <laughs> Uh, I've been practicing my karate. <laughs> what I've been doing is practicing karate on a daily basis in anticipation of coming by and doing your show. Wow. And uh, I, I'm just going to say it one time because I don't think we need to go there again. But yes, faggot. If you keep that up, yeah. I'm, I'm coming right across that console and I'm going to kick your ass. You know, that's what we have. The a jokes stop now. We have a tape of you saying that to Johnny Carson. I know you kid. You're a kidder. And I've I, certainly uh, over the years, uh, I, I've, I've gotten a thicker skin. A thicker skin about everything that people say. And a more leathery skin. And a more leathery voice, <laughs> as you've noticed. Because now, in the old days, <laughs> it sounded more like donkeys. 
It's a beautiful song. How come you weren't uh, on camera at the Reagan funeral today? I was not invited. I was an uninvited guest. <laughs> you crap. That's uh, that's the way I'll always look at uh, Nancy and Ronald uh, as 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 they as they really uh, do relate to me. I will always be an uninvited guest, but nonetheless a true patriot and a great supporter. And uh, thanks to Secretary Watt. When he had me down on the mall, and uh, and the rainbow appeared over the Washington Monument, it was yeah. a fabulous thing. So you're saying you were at the Reagan funeral today? I, I tell you that uh, Jerry and I love this one in particular. My my brother Jerry Newt. Daddy loves you all so fast. Now I still sing that in the, in my my Las Vegas review, Good. Uh, where I also play the trumpet and appear in a spacesuit. <laughs> I'd like to tell all of your your wonderful listeners, and and you know, Lord knows you've got. So many good people that uh, that listen to this show. Yeah, I want to say that uh, please, when you come out to uh, the greatest city in the world, my home of many many moons, Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, come out to the to the Wayne Newton show and see what a multifaceted performer I am. I act, I sing, I dance, I play a variety of musical instruments. Did you notice that uh, when Reagan's uh, casket was uh, going down the street today in the uh, in the old uh, time thing with the wooden caisson. wheels? And, uh, yeah, the caisson. Thank you. The caissons go rolling along. So it's, uh, it's so good to be here to try to bring a little joy and a little ray of sunshine on an otherwise uh, gloomy and sad day. They did have the the uh, the the horse without the guy on the horse. Yes, the rattleless horse. Yes. Uh, and speaking what, of horses, I uh, have I mentioned that I I've got a wonderful stable of beautiful Arabian stallions that I keep at my ranch now the, out in Las Vegas, Nevada. This was I was wondering about. I said, Did I mention that I've also uh, lost over 400 pounds <laughs> eating a diet of uh, consisting only of Caesar salads. Congratulations. I'm very, very happy about that. Caesar salad's a great way to lose weight, but only Caesar salad. None of that grilled chicken or shrimp that a lot of people like to sprinkle Did on. Did they have to take you out of your house? Did the firemen have to come and take you out of your house? And then well, that? back in the day, they didn't have that technology. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a split level, and uh, they carried me out uh, with uh, with really more of a canvas burlap sack. Uh, the nets <laughs> were not uh, used for heavy people. So what are your memories of, of Ronald Reagan? We uh, we occasionally have a funeral for one of my Arabians out at uh, my ranch, Casa de Shenandoah, which is uh, you, know, you can always, find out. Always a you can find out that all this stuff is real if you go to WayneNewton dot com. WayneNewton dot com. You can also get information on getting tickets to uh, my many shows, both in Branson and uh, also in Las Vegas, Nevada. Of course, the uh, Branson experience was uh, was really not one of the best business decisions I've ever made, but uh, I'm happy to be in Las Vegas. Isn't it a great town? Haven't they done marvelous things with that town? My so friend? you crashed the Reagan funeral today? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. I was there. You didn't see me on camera because I was in the, the back row. Good for you. Uh, but still, uh, back row, front row, third row, fifth row. Uh, it doesn't take away from uh, from my sadness as as a great American. And do you have a message for the dead Ronald Reagan? Uh, the message would be uh, safe safe home, my friend. Mm -hmm. Safe journey, safe journey to you and to all of your listeners. I say the same thing. When the time comes, when the Reaper uh, or the Reaper as he's called yeah. knocks on your door. You know, I hope you're as prepared as Mr. Ray. But you're talking about Kobe Bryant, right? I think no. when the Raper knocks yeah, on the no, Raper, no. no. Uh, it was, uh, I was uh, endeavoring to play trombone <laughs> with the Marine Band. <laughs> oh. I am a trombone player. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. But uh, I, I know you brought up the Carson thing, and it just uh, disturbs me greatly. I was such a fan. And, uh, you know, the anger that I felt and the anger I feel now when you mention that horrible word well, you could is, comment. is something that disturbs me greatly. You could comment about a couple of clips here. There was a Wayne Newton show on, on uh, the History Channel. I've told the uh, folks at CBS that I would like to be on Survivor, too. I would like to be on Survivor. Oh, we just had Lex okay. from Survivor All-Stars. I love on. the show. And uh, can I just say, Jerry, uh, Jerry from Survivor, the beating that that woman Endures mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis is uh, is quite unfair. Not fair. My brother, your brother Jerry. My brother Jerry and I would eat ice cream and view Carson's program when I had ballooned to over four hundred pounds. <laughs> comment on this sound bite. But the Caesar salads made it go away. Sure. Come comment on this sound bite. Please. Yes, go ahead. Well, I, I think I've had this is in four days. I've had five hours sleep. I, I will go and go and go and go, and then I'll sleep for like thirty-six hours. All right, so you just said on that tape that you I would go and go. It's true. It's true. It's what you hear is true. I, I'm not prepared to, um, in any way, dispel any myths here. Um, I would go uh, for five hours, uh, two hours of sleep a night, and then sleep straight through for uh, sometimes 
upwards of 72 hours. Wow. Comment on I this. would hibernate much like a bear. Comment on this uh, soundbite, please. please. I said to my aide, um, there's a, a, the most gorgeous lady I've ever seen uh, in my uh, life. Uh, 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 oh, oh, yeah. I cannot miss yeah. her with yeah. blonde hair, blue eyes, blonde hair. and a smile that lights blue up eyes. this room. Can and I ask you something? When you, yeah. when you say the word smile... I have to say, can I say one thing? Yeah. And this, is, this will be a hip and timely for your listening audience, because okay. I know that's what you do on your show. And uh, I will say that I feel the same way right now about uh, that wonderful, wonderful host and uh, master of ceremonies, Ryan Seacrest. Oh, he's got blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> and he is just fabulous. And I feel the same way almost uh, as I do about my own wife. He's a beautifully talented man. He's got, he's got great wit and great energy. Huh. He's when a terrific guy. When you say that a, is a smart turtleneck. You're when you say a word like... <laughs> let, let me I said, if you let her escape... Uh, es right there, the word is... The word is not... Escape. It's escape. It's escape. I said. I said, if you let her escape, please don't bother coming back. I will. I will kick the, your ash. The sound of the <laughs> the ashes. Yeah, I, What's happening with your ashes? See, I know what you're doing here. What you're doing here is you're trying to indicate there's some sort of affectation in my voice. Mm -hmm. This is me. What you see. Pal, Hold on. Is what you get. It, I'm the real deal. You dye I'm your real, hair. I'm the you, real way. You dye your hair. That's alleged. <laughs> you, you, you've had God knows how many elective plastic surgeries. You're a lie machine. You know what you are. You're a little lie machine. You've had and you lipo. Can, you've got your microphone and you can you can spew out this trash. You if drew, I can, if you I can drew on a mustache for God's sake. I I, I invite you to uh, take a view of me at uh, WayneNewton.com. Click on my virtual mustache. And uh, I, it'll give you everything you need to know. This hair, there's just a, it's a genetic flaw, I suppose, that uh, my hair does not turn gray. And that my skin remains remarkably taut, even after all these years. There is no Can you blink? Can you blink your eyes? I can. Do it then. I don't choose to do it right now. Ah. I dare you. you can, see, you've had so many faces okay, that you can't okay, blink hold your on, eyes. Hold on, just slow down, my mm. friend. Hold on just a second here. Okay. I, I would like to actually... Blink for you if you could furnish me with a pair of Ray Ban sunglasses. If you could do that, I do that for you right now. I just do. I do the little blink. I'll try. Here okay, we go. try. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Try it again. <laughs> oh, uh, you're one pain in the neck. <laughs> you're I'll tell you right really now. Struggling. Those the, reason, eyes... the reason I do not blink has much to do with my wide-eyed wonderment uh, and love for many. That's what it is. Yeah. Life's an adventure. Grab it. And every day, if you can wake up and uh, and fill yourself with joy, as I do with my lovely wife and my stallions, <laughs> each day at Casa de Shenandoah. Do you, you think you're, you live a full life, a very full life? Are you jealous? Listen, I got to ask. We, we have to break back that. That is a word that is not in the Newton vocabulary. Good. Are you jealous? A jealousy. Not. Are me. you? Are you jealous? I'm working that into my act. That uh, that wonderful tune Good. that the kids love so much. Oh, the Jim Blossom. Yes. The a Jim jealousy. I, I, you know, it's one of those contemporary hits that was a. I think a big hit's been number one like the last couple of months. <laughs> I'm, I'm are you with that one? Are you jealous that Merv Griffin was a pallbearer at the Reagan funeral? Jealousy, Don, would not be the word. Jealousy is is a harsh word. It's a mean word, and it's very frustrating for me to uh, to think. And when I have to think, I shut my eyes. And hey! If I shut my eyes, I must bare my teeth <laughs> because it comes from a place called my heart. I love this. Thank you, my friend. Please come to the show. You had to be crushed that Merv Griffin was there, and you had to sneak into the cathedral today. Listen, I, I could talk about the funeral until I turn blue in the face, which would be impossible due to my, my leathery skin. But uh, I've got an exciting offer, and it's, uh, it's in development, and it's something that we... Uh, I like moving my jaw around like that. It's something we're excited about at uh, Casa de Shenandoah. This is a new product. And everybody, really, if you want in on this joke, seriously, go to WayneNewton.com. I ask you not. You will see this. He's got his ranch, like J.R. Ewing's ranch, on, on the Internet. Casa de Shenandoah, it is a ranch. We raise our own horses. I've uh, assisted in the birth of many of those colts, and uh, if that's what they're called. And I will tell you something that excites me greatly. Peyton, Edgerton, and Marvin. We are. Uh, the triplets. We are going to uh, come out the Indianapolis Colts. with a wonderful, wonderful line of Wayne Newton products for, for each and every one of you. Uh, really? It's hair care, skin care, oh. and uh, also it's a slight adjustment.
adjustments you can make to your own body that uh, cause the face to be, uh, well, it's a tape-based, it's a scotch product oh. from DuPont. And uh, it's something that you take your neck and you squeeze your neck back together. Now, all you have to do, it's much like a Band-Aid. Are you familiar with the Breathe Right strips you use for your yeah. nose? Yeah. Well, yeah. what you do, and this is an exciting product, you take the scotch tape or the tape product, the Breathe Right, and you, you tape it to the back of your neck, a la Marsalis from Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it causes the skin to tighten around your no. neck and face. Come on. Uh, giving you that youthful appearance. Archie Bell, tighten up now. It's wonderful. Archie Bell in the drill. I should point out that at Casa de Shenandoah, peacocks and swans roam freely. <laughs> They're free to fly away. <laughs> and if, if they choose to, but they want to stay like me sure. in uh, the greatest city in the world, Las Vegas. If you go to the website, you can actually click on, and it shows mm -hmm. Wayne's peacocks. Yes, they're beautiful peacocks, uh, beautiful swans. You bring to me such joy and lovely happiness <laughs> that you must always have good thoughts, mm -hmm. my friend. You're We're going to play Jeopardy with Wayne Newton now. Well, what All a right. super show. A little bluer than I like to go. Hey, we're clean now. But you're doing a fine job. I, I enjoyed it. Phone and number is 877-365-3636. I think we need two contestants for Jeopardy here. And can I tell you something to your listeners, please? Yeah. What these boys do each and every day for the obese in America is to be commended. Mm -hmm. I, I salute you. And oh, I you heard the 800-pound guy? I salute you and I salute your partner. And uh, and anyone else that would have a drinking problem, I would say, <laughs> you know, keep working for the obese. Thank they're, you. They're, they're the forgotten man. There you go. The joke stopped now. All right. I tell you, I, I've been working on my karate for only one reason. Why? I want to kill Don. <laughs> <laughs> we need two callers for Jeopardy with a very sincere Wayne Newton. Let's have a talk, shall we? You, me, and our love. <laughs> What's our love? My love for you, my friend. As I have love for everyone <laughs> on this rainy day in our nation's capital. <laughs> Salute to you, Don Geronimo. Do you have any love for Nancy? Nancy. <laughs> Nancy Reagan. Reagan. No, I was not. I was not uh, going to share that, but I could. I could work something up during the commercial break. All right. All right. Salute to you, former first lady. <laughs> okay. Heartfelt uh, from your ticker. You surpassed Jerry. My brother, <laughs> on the scale of love, for Jerry. Wow. <laughs> Jerry Newton. <laughs> Jerry Newton. Is that with an I? Yes, he's changed it. He spells it like Jerry on Survivor. <laughs> we will be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. People take from me, or probably any performer, what it is they need. And uh, you can't know what each of them needs. So the only shot you have at touching them in that place called the heart what? is to be what you are. The Don and Mike Show. What the hell is that? Promoting voluntary sterilization. The Don and Mike Show. That is, that is gospel truth. <laughs> but that tape we just played? Well, if I can touch you in that place we call the heart, I know I've done my job as a performer. My friend. <laughs> You're touching me in that place called my stomach. I think you're giving me acid reflux. Now, that's uh, you're, you're a comedian, and you do great jokes, and uh, we have good times. Thank you, faggot. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Now, the jokes stop now, or I'll kick your ass. <laughs> Wayne Newton, great American. I, w I should mention as we go to uh, play Low Budget Jeopardy. Yes. He is wearing a spacesuit right now. Why are you wearing a NASA spacesuit? Uh, at the conclusion of your program right here, I will be stepping out, hopping on my private jet, flying back to Vegas, and uh, that's why I'm not wearing my helmet. I'll put the helmet on. I'll be a sheet of smoke, and I will appear. Are you aware when my best buddy, Mike O'Mara, went to see you at Las Vegas that you actually came out in, in a, a spacesuit? Space <laughs> you know, we're not making that up. That is entertainment, my friend. Yeah. That's the way it works. And I'm I'm very excited to be here right now on the Don and Mike Show. Wayne Newton here for the uh, Reagan funeral, mm -hmm. although you weren't invited. Great Americans, both. Let's say hi from uh, Modesto, California. Great town. Accountant named Todd Leonard. Where is Todd? Hey, Todd. Hey, how's it going? Hi, my friend. Now entering the studios, our challenger number two. This is a title clerk from uh, the beautiful town of Wichita, Kansas, Middle America. A great place to be and raise a family. Let's say hi to Jason Moss. Hello, Jason. Wayne hey, LQ. Good day to you both. Hi, guys. Don't forget answering the form of a question. Please I live do. with my mom. Yes. 
Uh, clip on tie, all that stuff. Here's, here's your uh, questions, the categories and the questions they are. I miss my mom. <laughs> for the moms. Mama Newt. Speaking of moms, mm -hmm. for the moms, do they drive minivans or SUVs? Fascinating. Minivans or SUVs. Huh. You're, you're, the creative juices continue to flow. Oh, yeah. The NBA Finals. I love the NBA. It's a great uh, little round ball. Paris Hilton on TV before The Simple Life. I played basketball when I was a boy. <laughs> How old are you? I'm not going to reveal that. No, that's a category. It's a showbiz secret. <laughs> and uh, last week's top-selling TV shows on DVD. Excellent. What a great game you've come up with today. So, these categories, they're all over the place. Moms, minivans, or SUVs? I salute you. You salute me? I salute you. Man. The NBA Finals. Yes. Sir. Paris yes. Hilton on TV before The Simple Life. She's trash. How old are you? Yes. And last week's top-selling TV shows on DVD. Uh, Jason, we'll start with you. I'm going to go with moms with SUVs or minivans. All right, I'll tell you the name of celebrity mothers. Just tell us if they drive a minivan or an SUV. Can I mention that category is my favorite? <laughs> it's just so unique and pop culture-y. <laughs> Kelly Ripa. <laughs> Kelly Ripa. Read it to Kelly Lee. What is a... An SUV. Oh, <laughs> negative. Well, Todd, you've got a great chance here. Here's your opportunity to steal. What is a minivan? Right, Kelly Ripa drives a minivan, Toyota. One dollar for the Toddster. Select again, please. Uh, does the mom drive a minivan or SUV for two? two. All right, how about this? Nicole Kidman. What is an SUV? I'm sorry, Todd Raider. Jason, your chance to uh, to steal. <laughs> what is a minivan? Yeah. Now, isn't that surprising? Mm -hmm. not, you don't picture Nicole Kidman driving a minivan. I do. I can see her do that. She's probably a good family lady that has to transport her progeny in any way she sees fit. And thank God she finally is divorcing that faggot. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason, select again. Quickly, <laughs> now, what as long if, as the arrows are not shot my way. What if Tom Cruise right called you, and, and he wanted to kick your ass? I'll, I will, uh, well, you know, I'd, I'd respond to that in only way that I, I know, a karate chop <laughs> to the solar plexus. <laughs> uh, mom's minivan for three. Oh, she's a new mother. Helen Hunt. Well, what is an SUV? Yeah. Three dollars for you, Jason, and the Argonauts, and uh, let's uh, select... Navigator is what you drive, Navigator. That's huh? a big vehicle. Sure is. And, uh, you know, really, I'd like to salute our oil companies in this country. I think they're the beating they take each and every day. <laughs> yeah, okay, they deserve our support. I'm working on a campaign right now for the big oil companies. Oh. Gasoline. How about it this? gets you there. How about this to help out the oil companies? How about we just get a, a couple of rags and and just and just towel you down? That's fine. I uh, I just think that we're we're beating up on these large oil companies that keep America going, and that's why I drive a vintage tank. <laughs> Go ahead, who's in, who's Jason. You're in control. Jason. Jason, how good is DVD on TV? All right, now these are TV shows that have been put on DVD, okay? And these are the ones that you guys bought the most of this week, according to the Blockbuster. Uh, fantastic. Stars Matt LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Not in the form of a question. Todster. I am dumb. Todster, your chance to steal. What is Friends? Yes, Friends, the season finale. That was the best-selling TV show on DVD last week. One dollar for the Todd man. Select again, please. Um... DVD of TV show releases for two. Stars Tom Wopat. Uh, what is the Dukes of Hazard? Right. Fantastic. Two dollars for you, Toderator. Here we go. For three. Stars Buck Owens. What is he, huh? Yeah. Three dollars. You've done well yeah, in this he ran, category. He, he almost ran the category. Who's going out and buying the box set of Dukes of Hazard? May I just say that I eagerly <laughs> May I say that I eagerly await the DVD release of Here's Lucy, <laughs> sure. where I got my start as the uh, as the androgynous farm boy. <laughs> Todd, you're you're in control. Uh, NBA Finals for one. NBA Finals, the TV network that's carrying the games. What is ABC? Right. One dollar for you, Todd. You've moved into a commanding lead. Go again, please. NBA Finals for two. Uh, the team's playing in the finals this year. Who are the Detroit Pistons and the Los Angeles Lakers? Right. Very good. Two dollars for you, Todd. Doing a great job on the Don and Mike show Thanks, on the please. Westwood One Radio Network. NBA Finals for three. He is coach of the Detroit Pistons. 
Who is Larry Brown? Larry Brown. Yeah, three dollars. Three dollars for you, Todd, and maybe a a little one-on-one -on -one basketball would have prevented my weight from ballooning to over <laughs> seven hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd. Uh, Paris Hilton on TV for one. Okay, uh, Paris Hilton on TV before she was on The Simple Life, and also this is not counting her uh, sex tape. She's trash. She appeared this year, 2004, on this Fox primetime soap opera. What is the 70s? Show? Oh, I'm sorry, Todster. We're going to get uh, Jason over here to, to, to see if he can speak. Jason? What is the OC? Right. And what was the dollar value? Uno. Uno. One dollar for you. And uh, Paris Hilton is a garbage can. For two. Here we go. Uh, Paris Hilton appeared in this 2003 movie starring Mike Myers. Todd. Hey, what is the cat in the hat? Right. Two dollars for you, Jason. Select again, please. For Jason. Please, please. Here we go. For three. Sorry, Todd. I just like saying Todd. Uh, Paris Hilton was in this 2001 Ben Stiller movie. What is something about Mary? Negative. Todd, how are you, my friend? It's your chance to steal. Um, I have no idea. I'm sorry. That's Zoolander. And uh, Jason, you're still in control. All right, last category. How old yes. are you? How old are you? Here you go. I'll, I'll tell you a celebrity. Okay. Uh, tell me how old the celebrity is. Present right. company excluded, I hope. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> there you go, my friend. <laughs> Trent Reznor. You know, what is from Nine Inch Nails. Right, what is 27? Negative. Todd, your chance to steal. What is 29? No. Brent Reznor's 39. That's a surprise. Wow. I had no idea that he was that long in the tooth. <laughs> for two, and please. I'm so sorry that Creed broke up. <laughs> Todd, uh, okay, for uh, two. Jason, you're in control. For two, I know he's a, a dear friend of yours, Wayne. Yes. Fitness guru, faggot Richard Simmons. Oh, bravo. <laughs> a wow, what is 46? No. Todd, your chance to steal. But it is 61. Double nickel, 55. 55. Uh, and notice again. And still manages to look stunning. Th there again, I threw in that word, faggot. You didn't care. Yes, of course. Uh, if it's directed elsewhere. Send that sling and arrow towards me, and uh, you're, you're in trouble, my friend. <laughs> All right, Jason, you're in control. <laughs> Last question on the board. Last question on the board. Uh, how old are, are you? Hip-hop star Missy Elliott. What is 31? Oh, no. Todd, your chance to steal. What is 26? Oh, no, no, sorry. Missy Elliott's 32. Oh, uh, that's the end of the first round of low budget <clears throat> Jeopardy. 32, or as the kids would say, OJ. OJ. That, that was OJ's number, right. 32. 32. How old is she? She's 30. My kids said, said that the other day, something like, uh, what channel is it on? He said, Jeff Gordon. I said, Jeff, we said, Dad, Channel 24. Uh -huh. Channel 24, okay. whatever. Very huh? clever. Done in, done in Europe beforehand. Huh? <laughs> I didn't I know that. I believe it was a European thing yes. where you'd put in the, uh, the name and it would relate to a numerical situation. My friend. I don't know about you, Jeff Hardy. We physically force you both to bet it all. Here's your category. I have to blow my nose. Here's the category. <laughs> She's so hairy. She's so hairy. That's your category. Here's the answer. She's the author who's written these goddamn Harry Potter books. She's so hairy. She is the author who has written every Harry Potter book. Uh, we need her name in the form of a question. Guys, good luck. Oh, and no Googling. Thank you, Don. All contestants on Low Budget Jeopardy will receive items from the Wayneware collection of fine leathers. All of these handcrafted items are made to look and feel and wear just like my own skin. The color, feel, breathability, and texture of these jackets, belts, and wallets <laughs> mimics my skin perfectly and allows you to keep Wayne Newton with you at all times. I'm sure when you try any of these products, you'll always say it's not just leather, it's Wayne wear. Now back to the Go put your jeopardy. All right, let's see. We want to go to um, Jason. Jason, thank you. You're welcome, uh, my friend. Jason, she's so hairy, she's the author who's written the Harry Potter books. I have no kids. What is Dale Token? 
I'm sorry. Negative. Wrong franchise. Negative. Todd, you're the big winner if you've got the answer. What is? I have no clue. No. <laughs> what a shame. No and winners. I, and I bet you know her, Wayne. I bet you've been intimate with her. Yes. If you could, faggot. Of course. Say no. The jokes stop now. J.K. Rowling. Yes. That's the lady's name. I said, J.K., come out hey. for a bite of lunch and a ride on one of my stallions. <laughs> so, <laughs> she writes no blue. It's the type of game Alan Limewan loves. Yes, of course. We're giving away no money today. Yeah. However, uh, Jason and Todd, uh, we ask you both, don't go away, Matt. Just go away. Wayne, do you need your glasses to read the, the prize sheet? I'm going to muddle through, my friend. All right, here is Wayne Newton, who did not get invited to the Reagan funeral, to tell you what you've won. Uh, guys, congratulations, Jason and Todd. This is Wayne Newton. I'd like to tell both of you, you won a 7-Eleven Big Bite. Wow, what a great place. <laughs> and super big gulp prize pack. Including a $25 7-Eleven convenience card. Stop by 7-Eleven for a big bite, all beef, quarter pound hot dog. I could eat 20. From Oscar Mayer. And a super big gulp of ice cold Coca-Cola. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. You're doing the Thank you. Congratulations. There's you, more. You want an exclusive Don and Mike logo sleeve of Pro V1 golf balls. Courtesy of Golf. Live the game. Thank you, boys, and thanks so much for playing the game. This is your friend. Wayne Newton. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys you. very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Don. Have a great weekend. You too. Well, I tell you what. Thank you for you sure do sound like a girl on this song. Joy and pain. Wow. The jokes. Stop now. <laughs> Are you calling me effeminate? <laughs> so did you wear a dress to the funeral today? That's not kind. <laughs> it's that kind of unkind remark. I think I've I think I've put those femininity questions to rest. You know, another beautiful woman was there today. Bo Derek was at the Reagan funeral. Occasionally went in my dressing room. Yeah? I mimic Brenda Lee. <laughs> oh, rocking around the Christmas tree. Rocking around the Christmas tree. And then I play my trombone. As only I can, my friend. <laughs> Special life. And you didn't get invited to the funeral, huh? Uh, regretfully, I was passed over. <laughs> In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, it's got a who's one who. man found a way to bring good news to his people. Curious buzz. Me. He made it up. What are you doing, Wayne? I'm bleeding from my nipples. <laughs> oh, dear. Buzz, what is your lead story on the news and comments today? Today, Rush Limbaugh is getting divorced. Oh, dear. <laughs> Another tragedy. How, how can this nation sustain any more? <laughs> My friend, <laughs> Wayne, thank you. Always remember, never forget. Low Budget Jeopardy is a production of Coron Incorporated. <laughs> Stay tuned for news and, and comments coming up, coming up. Us. on the Don and Mike Show. Wayne, yes, what's that, Don? You're beautiful. That was very professional. <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. So long. This is the Don and Mike Show. You okay, Buzz? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Are you sleeping? Quick nap, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Mike, you know what Buzz needs? Yeah, I know, he needs OnStar. Yes, he does. OnStar personal calling. It's hands-free. Buzz, you'd be driving down the road sleeping. No. And you could make a call without using your hands. Oh. If Buzz was ever in any kind of distress, he could use his hands-free calling. And, uh, you know, just call out a name, like, uh, help 911, and uh, his OnStar personal calling system would work wonders. That's very true, Buzz. You know, you can personalize OnStar uh, calling to recognize voice commands, such as hospital, mortuary, yes. nursing home. <laughs> but enough about Reagan. Of course. We're talking about Buzz. And there are no additional long distance or roaming charges. OnStar personal calling has better reception in areas where there's limited range. So not only is it hands-free, it's always there. And it works a lot of times when your cell phone doesn't. If you don't have OnStar, and I know you, you're that goofball in front of me, do all of us a favor and get it. <laughs> the OnStar personal calling is available in most markets. It's great. Thank you. Commercial over. The Don and Mike Show. Pep talk over. This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. Now, made funnier by the Infinity Lawyers. It's yeah. the Don and Mike Show. They help. Time for Buzz's new show brought to you by Smoke Break. Smokers, break the nasty habit without gaining weight. Smoke Break. First tablet for rev uh, smoke break is the first tablet for smokers. It's revolutionary. Get it at fine retailers. Just ahead of Buzz. 
see what's on the line next week. Where is that, that pan? B.A.? Hello? I call good through? She's always working. Busy, busy. I know she is. Hello? Hey, B.A. Yeah. What do we got lined up so far for next week? Oh, we got all kinds of great stuff. We've got uh, Penn of Penn & Teller on Monday. Wonderful. Right, that's from the show Bull S. We love that show. I may have to apologize to him uh, when we have him on the show Monday for falling asleep at his show in Las Vegas. Well, oh, that's dear. okay. Buzz just fell asleep during our, during our show. No, it during happens. Your commercial. It was a nap. Uh, who else besides uh, Penn Gillette? And then um, on Tuesday... We have Rachel from For Love or Money because For Love or Money is on Monday night. Right. Remember we had the dumb bachelor guy on yesterday, so then we'll have the... Uh, Probably she's the most memorable uh, girl... Uh, of, the, of the remaining six. And once again, we'll be able to have that wonderful dissertation about who gets the $1 check and who gets the million dollars. Yeah, and maybe we get a little perspective yeah, on that guy because he was a little full of himself, right. I thought. And I'm sure when we talk to her on Tuesday, we all know that she has a dollar check. I think she has a dollar check. And uh, what day is it next week? Sunday next week. Are we giving away a trip around the world next week? Yes. Yes, we are from that, uh, from that movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So stuff's happening next week on the show. Yeah. And, and, but that's why I wasn't listening to you, because I'm still working on other stuff right now for next week. Wow. Gotcha. Way yeah. to go. Okay. Right to the end. Right to the mm -hmm. last minute. Bye, B.A. Bye. Bye-bye. And next week, the return of Match Game 2004. Fantastic. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's going to be tough, because not every answer can be penis. Yeah, like it used yeah. to be. Oh, Hi, man. Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. Good old days. Just in this hour from the PR Newswire, a statement from Rush Limbaugh's public relations firm that reads, Rush Limbaugh announced today that he and his wife, Marta, have mutually decided to end their marriage of ten years. Mr. and Mrs. Limbaugh have separated pending an amicable resolution. Uh, that's an end of the quote. This announcement comes at what's known as the end of the news cycle, that is to say... 5.30 p.m. on Friday, Friday right. when it would have the least impact. Ma -ma 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 -ma. And, so, also, here. and also, you know, Reagan is going to be all over the news all weekend. And, right. And then you've got Ray Charles, who mm -hmm. is, uh, and it's only still waiting for that third. Still, because it's, it's You're Reagan. not going to count Tony Randall, are you? No. Tony Randall was, uh, how many, two weeks ago? Yeah, like two and a half. Two and, and really, yeah. Ray Charles, no disrespect to Tony R Randall, I mean... He was an icon, yeah. not like Reagan. Not like Reagan. So it's got to be at the uh, at Reagan and, and Ray Charles level. Yeah. Mm. I, I, oh, I remembered who I thought today was totally out of place at the funeral. Who? Tommy Lasorda. What is he doing there? I don't know. I mean, I know we had the list of what, Bo Derrick and everything. Right. But was Tom... he next to the guy that owns the wax museum? <laughs> Probably. Oh, the guy from eBay. Probably. <laughs> hey, Rob, you should book that guy on the show next week to find out if he's ever sold his eBay wax museum. I think when I checked this morning, it was like at $18,000. Really? Yeah, he's really, it's not moving. Well, I mm. guess he's not happy, then. No, we'll have to send him a figure. Sorry about that. That's so Rush Limbaugh is getting uh, yeah. divorced, and that is a girl that he met, how long, you say 10 years? Yes, 10 Isn't years. she the girl right. that designs his ties? Uh, Marta. Right. Yes. The lovely what, what, Marta. What, Robbie? This frees him up to date Sue. Oh, suppository. <laughs> oh, yeah, there Rush you go. is available. Man. That's who he's been having an affair with. Hello, suppository. <laughs> I'll meet you at eight. Arnold Schwarzenegger was the same spot as <laughs> you in the alley. Yeah. In the back alley. Join me in the alley. The cigar box. <laughs> Traffic's very, very congested. Oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger was... Up. Arnold was the first Californian to say goodbye to Ronald Reagan, and as everyone Hi, else... this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. As everyone else says goodbye to the former president, Arnold is comparing himself to Reagan. Oh, God. Sort of. Uh, they do have a lot in common, movie actors who became wildly popular governors of California. Their political strategies are very much the same. Was Reagan's dad a Nazi? I don't think so. No, that, that would be a difference. Uh, yesterday, Arnold was on TV talk shows with quotes like this one from the Today Show. Hi, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ronald Reagan has always been my hero. I am not trying to be Ronald Reagan because Ronald Reagan is Ronald Reagan. I will always be Arnold. <laughs> but I can draw... Brilliant. I can draw from the inspirations that Ronald Reagan gave me. Hi, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I will draw from the inspirations and the thing and stuff. Jesus, that's good. Dope. Not everyone remembers Reagan fondly. That includes a college DJ in Fairbanks, Alaska, who's been suspended for a show he called a celebration that Reagan is, quote, finally dead. Whoa. Spider-boy. 
The station won't give his real hey, name. Hey, boy. Wasn't even supposed to be doing a show. He was supposed to have been playing pre-recorded programming. I see, he's not Spider-Man, he's Spider-Boy. Spider-Boy. That's why the school says it suspended him uh, for having a wrong show. The DJ says two-thirds of the calls he got from listeners supported his view. The station says it got some complaints as well. Quoting the DJ, I was sick of all the media glorifying Reagan and rewriting history. That was pretty despicable. Basically, the gist of the show was a celebration that Reagan was finally dead, end quote. Oh, God. Among the songs he played, Nancy Sinatra's <laughs> These Boots Are Made For Walking," a reference to what he said he'd like to do at Reagan's grave. Wow. Among other things. There's a lot of anger, boy. Yeah. Hey, boy. It's me, Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Tough guy. <laughs> The judge in the Michael Jackson child molestation case says he doesn't want to taint the jury pool. Yeah, you said taint. I did. So the judge is clamping down even harder on the secrecy surrounding the evidence. Please don't clamp down on me so hard. The media's oh. been arguing for more details. At the last hearing, Judge oh. Judge Rodney Melville said... Oh, that hurts me. ...said he'd think about it. Oh, that hurts me. Don't clamp on me. I'm not jackal. <laughs> Yesterday, the judge decided to keep the details under wraps, including the questions and answers from the grand jury. He'll also keep hidden some of the specific charges against Jackson. There it is. He clamped down on me. Look. A bruise. Oh, no. <laughs> the judge says he's afraid that releasing the evidence could make that evidence inadmissible in the trial. Bye. Hello. Uh, Robbie, I need a jingle. Oh, you do? Uh, you got it? Thank you. Hello? This is Spider Man. Boy. Reagan. Spider Boy. Mm -hmm. Reagan's dead. Reagan's dead. Well, nothing's been the same since he left that day. I hate Momentum that song. for the skin. <laughs> so do I. Boy. Thank you, Spider Boy. He loved his cars. He loved I love Joe Gibbs. But in Redskins Fine. land, we're glad he's coming back. He was coach Redskins. when Reagan was alive. Reagan's dead. I'm glad I'm Spider Boy. Spider Boy. Can I we make a <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the next story. <laughs> Can I bought the story two stories ago. Hi. It just took me a moment to find the Joe Gibbs song. Stop clamping down on me. <laughs> Can't buy me love. Having more money does not mean you'll have more sex. And that's coming from some economists. Please tell You know where you could have done that survey? Where? Right at this microphone. <laughs> uh, if only I'd known. Instead, I turned to researchers at Dartmouth and the National Institute of Economic Research. They launched Please. a study of the, quote, still relatively unexplored links between income, sexual activity, and well-being. The more zeros added to my pay a paycheck, I swear to God, over the years, uh -huh. it's like it's like accounting. The less times I get, I get action. Wow. So you take a jelly bean out of the jar every time you get a zero. That's right, or, Mike. Or take a few hundred jelly beans out of the jar. That's right. Now, the Institute normally just studies recession. on cash. <laughs> I just go to the ATM. This time, the Institute surveyed 16,000 Americans about money and sex. They found that well-being, or happiness, is very much connected to how much sex you have, but that there's virtually no connection between sex and how much money you have. They say it doesn't seem to affect how often you have sex or the number of partners. In a depressing discovery, they found that Americans, on average, have sex only two or three times a month. Hmm. Boy, that sucks. Yeah. This you should not do. You should not say he's an animal. He's a. Should not say he's Jacko. Jacko. That was two stories ago. <laughs> Hi, it's Spider Boy. <laughs> Hello, and and I'm Michael Jackson from story number three. <laughs> uh, by the time, by the time you're say 88 years old, how many hours do you think you will have spent waiting in the car while your wife does some shopping? Hi, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, that's back to story number two. <laughs> For an elderly Miami man, it was about an hour too long. Hold on, Buzz, please start over again. Okay. By the time you're 88 years old, how many hours do you think you would have spent waiting in the car for your wife who's inside shopping? Oh, Christ. Uh, Ten? Okay. Well, for an elderly Miami man, that was an hour too many. Oh, I see. This it wasn't like a quiz. It was oh he. Was, I think we well, got. A de I think I'm, we got a death coming up. I'm interested in. Well, no, actually, no one died. Really? Yeah. Hold but I don't think second. you'll be disappointed. Hold on, please. Nine oh three.
30 and 14 K on the award winning Jeff Christie Rock and Roll Radio Show with fun and frolic for all. Some of you, no doubt, still wondering what award I have won. I'll tell you five stories five ago. Five stories. Yeah, the original story. Rush Limbaugh. Music. <laughs> Music. Radio. That's Rush Limbaugh when he was a DJ. That yes. was five stories Jeff ago. Jeff Christie was his name before he was married. So what happened to the 80 year, eight year old man? Uh, Emilio grew weary of waiting for his wife in the store, so he stormed out to the car to listen to the radio. Good move. Good man. But being 88, he accidentally put the car into gear, hit another car, and then threw it into reverse and hit four other parked cars. Oh, no. No one got hurt. Emilio Guys! Got, uh, Emilio got <laughs> cited for careless driving. His wife received no citation for careless shopping. <laughs> but what's the alternative? Dying at home alone in your pajamas? In Tokyo, they just found the decomposed body of a man in his apartment... They figure he must have died about 20 years ago. Oh, where'd that happen? In Tokyo. I got two guys, Sean Payton and Mike Zimmer. You got to keep an eye on those two. Because they're going to try to get the upper hand on. Mike wants the defense to do well. God. And Sean, he's going to have a few... Jap plays. No disrespect it. to the Orientals, but what we call Jap plays. Right. Okay. No disrespect. Surprise things. And, uh, no disrespect. No disrespect no. to anyone. Thank you, Bill. Of course not. Uh, this guy sneaked into death about 20 years ago. They probably never would have found him if construction guys hadn't been about to tear down the building. His skeleton was lying oh. face up on a mattress. The calendar said February 1984. The newspaper on the table said February 20th, 1984. Hello. Police say the man ah. divorced his wife when he was about 55 years old in the early 80s. The upside, he never had to wait in the car for his wife at the age of 88. <laughs> okay, so you just, what you just did was uh -huh. you just referenced back to story number six. six. Tied them together. There right? you go. Yeah. So if that's six. It's backward what, day. What story are we up to next? What's the number, Buzz? Uh, number eight coming up next. And what's number eight? <laughs> uh, I, I, assistance from the devil. Can you supersize that? I'd like a number eight, please. You got it. Assistance <laughs> from the devil. <laughs> Super we'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Don and Mike Show. Oh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. God damn it. Right, right. The Don and Mike Show. Dedicate that to Ron Reagan. Yeah. Now, here's Buzz. Hi, Don and Mike. If you were way up high. You know it's late in the show. When... He says, God damn it, I said, dedicate that to Ron Reagan. Mike goes, yeah. 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 Whatever. Yeah. He's going to make questions. Yeah. <laughs> if you were way up high, dangling and hanging on for dear life, would you accept assistance from the devil? Oh, in a heartbeat. This yeah, guy, I would. This, yeah, I this, this guy did as well. At an amusement park in Stockholm, Sweden, a 16-year-old boy... I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you... A 16-year-old boy was clinging to the edge of a gondola on a Ferris wheel. How he got there, we don't know yet. Wow. A guy who wears a goatee and a devil costume at the nearby haunted house attraction came to the boy's rescue and saved him. Mm. The devil devil guy's real first name is Ben-Hur. <laughs> Jacques, do you like stories about gladiators? <laughs> Ben-Hur? Yeah, that's the I mean, guy's real name. He's given his birth name. So his last name is Hur and his first name is Ben? No, his first name is Ben-Hur. I, I didn't bother with his last name because it wasn't nearly as amusing. His uh, last name is Schwartz. <laughs> Maybe you heard that the classic X-rated movie... Oh, it's the devil. <laughs> well, look who's here. It's been a long time. How are you, Lucifer? Are you kidding? I was at the funeral today. Oh, you were? I had no idea. Oh, wow. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh. What do you mean that's not good? Well, it's very good. I was good friends with Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I don't believe I'm good friends with all the presidents. You know what? You're a conjurer. You're a liar. You're trouble. Saying, you are. Hey, check out my tail. You know, usually you burn me when I do when I say something like that. I don't have that sound effect. Oh, right that's too bad. Because the second to get the machine going. This is true. <laughs> well, you're a liar is what you're... Ow! Oh, you <laughs> said that. Ow! 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 No, enough! Enough! Ow! 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 I shared a cab today to the funeral. With my good friend Tommy Lasorda. Oh, did you really? Yeah. I didn't know he was in your stable. All of my clients were there. Really? Oh, Derek. Oh, yeah. Kirk Douglas. All of them? Have you heard him try to speak? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, that's, that's you're doing, huh? That's funny. Wow, well, I mean, that's not funny at all. I think you're. Oh, I guess. Yeah, not. you don't. I just learned my lesson. My clothes are still singed. <laughs> well, maybe you heard. Oh, I'm sorry. And I just wanted to say one little thing. Yes. Before I leave for the weekend. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> Yeah. Dr. Natasha Terry says hi. <laughs> there you go. I gotta go. Ryan Seacrest is on the phone. Dr. Natasha won't be on the show again, will he? Will, will she say? No, because you guys do a clean show now. Oh, that's a little. That's a little sad for me. Satan. Oh, by <laughs> Satan. There he goes. My funeral. One of my best pieces of work. Yeah. Good Did job. You like that? Yeah. Good job. Had a lot to do with that. That's Satan, ladies and gentlemen. Satan out. Maybe you heard that the classic X-rated movie Debbie Does Dallas has been made into an R-rated musical stage play. Really? Which is now traveling the country. But you probably asked yourself, will it play in Wichita? Answer, yes. Well, you would know you're Mr. Wichita. The play has opened to a solid mainstream review in the local paper, the Wichita Eagle. The paper calls the musical a novel concept, interesting, with charm, sly satire, with believable characters, it says. Buzz, your dad lives out there. You think you can hook him up with some tickets? I hope so. Is there any nudity in it? Father's Day is coming. Actually, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, just some references. Isn't that typical Wichita? Yeah. You'd, no, have, you'd, have, you'd have Debbie Does Dallas with no nudity. Yeah, that's not fun. That, that's the play, but Wichita has changed. Uh, the play's reception is a far cry from Wichita's history of banning the musical hair and optically modifying deep throat oh what am i saying about you know the, 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 don't I, don't i remember right we went to wichita back remember in the, the controversy of the las vegas style shows right. my god no wonder they have a debbie does dallas play with no with no nudity at, at all in, in <laughs> well, the play doesn't have any nudity anywhere at play it see what buzz's riot. point is gentlemen is that buzz is saying wichita has progressed that wichita yes. is making progress they got the debbie does dallas but i'm saying i understand know, that about point. the play i'm saying we need nudity in a show called debbie does does Dallas. Is the Debbie Does Dallas is it playing the cotillion? <laughs> is that the name of the play? That, that's where know, we almost got kicked out. Century of. two, I don't know where. And, and Buzz, is. based on some of the phone calls we've received from Wichita, uh-huh. I don't I don't know if things have really progressed in <laughs> in my second hometown of Wichita, Kansas. I, I kid because I love, but whenever um, the plane touches down in Wichita, I always mumble, uh, Welcome to Wichita, where the local time is 1973. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, I'd like to optically modify some of those callers. Hold on. Up. We just had a whole bunch from Wichita, and they all just dropped oh, off. Of course they did. That's area code 316. Is that what yes, you saw? That's was? correct. That's KFHFM, right? Uh-huh. right? They all just called. Forget it. You're out of there. It's hung up on all of you. Forget oh, about it. Well, I presented this story and uh, this review as a public service for towns roughly. Roughly the size of Wichita or smaller, you know who you are. Mm-hmm. And uh, Paris Hilton has finally agreed to do Letterman, as Don mentioned earlier. She's promoting a new season of The Simple Life, the show she does with her friend Nicole Richie, also aforementioned. Nicole, by the way, has announced that she is still a virgin at age 23. <laughs> Excuse me, that is the built in lie detector going off. <laughs> Actually, I think she had her hymen broken before she broke her first tooth. <laughs> oh, God. Morning, Nicole. If Brittany can say it, I can say it. And Nicole, by the way, says she's obsessed with Brittany. And Lindsay, what's that girl's name? Lindsay Lohan. Lohan. Lindsay Lohan says they're all retarded. Yeah, they were all on the MTV Movie Awards last night. And I want you to know something. I didn't watch it. Hey, I watched some you. of it. I could have. You didn't miss nothing. I know. And speaking of Brittany, who also calls people retarded, she got her knee blown out. Not badly, Not hopefully. Badly. <laughs> <laughs> it happened, happened during a dance rehearsal for a video she was shooting in New York. She had to cancel two shows back in March because of another knee sur- injury. Rather, Now she's getting arthroscopic surgery to remove some floating cartilage. Ooh. Here's Britney Spears' doctor. Tonight I saw and heard one of the most disgusting... Dr. Mora. ...sick demonstrations... In my entire career, probably mm-hmm. the worst. Right. When Wade Wilson got hurt, Britney Spears looked up in the sands and saw people standing, clapping, and cheering when he was laying on the ground. When she was laying sleep. on the ground. And I'll say this: those what? are some sick, 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 sick people. Mentally sick. sick. Mentally sick. I thought it was horrible, disgusting, disgusting embarrassing, shameful. <laughs> it stuck. People are sick when they do something sick in like the that. Head. Absolutely friggin' sick. What should happen to them? Guys out there busting his ass, Britney like Spears. all of our guys were, 
gets his knee blown up. What should happen? Badly, hopefully. What should happen? And they're standing and cheering and clapping. Mm -hmm. right. Those are sick people. What do you do? Sick in the head. What do you do? They ought to get their ass thrown right out of the stadium. There you go. Brady Spears' doctor, Jim Mora. <laughs> in sports, police in Lisbon, Portugal are pretty sure there won't be much, if any, violence from the fans when England's soccer team plays the team from France there Sunday. You know those soccer matches. Well, right. here's why police think what they're thinking, that there'll be no trouble. Here's their strategy. They've announced they will arrest people for being drunk. They've announced they won't arrest people for being high, getting high, or having weed, and no, and no confiscating of anyone's stash, they Hey, say. we're going to Lisbon. Quoting one non-impartial observer, alcohol makes fans fight, but cannabis smokers will be shaking hands and singing together. <laughs> we'll see. And finally... It never worked for the guys who wear female body inspector t-shirts, and it didn't work for this guy much. In, hey, I get that FBI female body inspector. In Lebanon, Pennsylvania, a man has been arrested for his scam to get free drinks at a local bar. 32-year-old Bob Magliochetti of Pottstown <laughs> posed as a liquor control inspector and threatened to card every customer in the joint if he didn't <laughs> get free drinks. I gotta Oh, wow. He's been charged with extortion and disorderly conduct, fined 450 bucks, and ordered to write letters of apology to the bar and the liquor control board. He was also charged with impersonating a public servant. <laughs> I'm Buzz Burbank on the Don and Mike Show. Thank you, Buzz. No. no. Yes, no. That's it. we got to go. No. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. Love your feet. Love your bar. We'll be back. Monday. Monday. With a brand new episode and good day to you, sir. 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 Day to you, sir. Oh, and Monday also has a taste. I think my wife and uh, Robbie's wife are drinking heavily right now. Right now as we speak, and we will have a tape of that on, on Monday as well. Excellent. What could possibly go wrong? La la. <laughs> Put your napkin on your lap. Eat a lot. Till we meet again, this is Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs>